Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 26 Broken Arm I can't allow you to continue the assignment with your current situation, Dujima said in a regretful tone as he looked at Alexander's casted arm. Then what about the assignment, what will my situation be? He asked with a serious expression. Unfortunately, you'll fail because you couldn't participate. Alexander looked at him calmly and sighed it's just one arm, and it's not that bad. I can still cook. He got out of the bed. Stop, don't move your body. Dujima prevented Alexander from getting out of the bed which annoyed Alexander even more than he is. He gave Dujima an angry look and said don't touch me, I know my body better than you. Do you think that a cracked bone can stop me from moving? I had suffered more severe injuries in the past. This much is nothing. Alexander got out of the bed again but Dujima didn't let him. Alexander was angry for real this time, he started losing his politeness with Dujima. Before he could do anything irrational he was cut off by another voice coming from the door. Just let him do what he wants, Dujima. Both Alexander and Dujima turned to see Shinomiya leaning on the door. Shinomiya. Dujima called in surprised. He didn't expect Shinomiya to show up shouldn't you help me to convince him to rest. His arm bone is cracked and his body has many bruises. I told you I'm fine. See. He said he is fine. Besides, if it was any serious injury he would be sleeping instead of getting in a push and pull fight with you on the bed. Shinomiya walked in and put his hand on Dujima's shoulder I don't even know why are you this scared. Hearing Shinomiya's last question, Dujima couldn't help but feel cold sweat on his back if only you know what family this guy comes from. He thought. Alexander's true origin is known only for a few people in this world. No one expects this guy to be the young leader of the old and powerful Russian gangs in the world, the Red Blinders. But, it will be difficult for him to cook with a cast on his arm. Dujima tried to protest but he was cut by the doctor who came back after taking care of his business. It's okay head general. As long as he can use one arm, then it's okay. He went to his desk and sat there typing something on the computer. See, said Shinomiya, he looked at Alexander and smirked which annoyed Alexander what are you still here doing? There is only an hour left before the assignment begin, he said. At that, Alexander took off from his bed and left the room. His body was aching from the bruises, especially on his lower part, but he can take it. It's not bad as walking with a bullet in your belly. When Alexander left, Dujima looked at Shinomiya with a confused look since when did you start caring for other people this much? He asked. Shinomiya shrugged and turned to leave from yesterday. Besides, you should investigate this case more. There is no way that two students started fighting on the stairs out of the blue. And I heard from Ms. Yuhara that two other students missed with his dish at her assignment. Shinomiya gave Dujima a serious look someone is playing around here, and their target seems to be the kid. Dujima stood there thinking about Shinomiya's words and he found it made sense. It's not strange that students cause trouble for each other but, no matter how he looked at the CCTV it clearly shows that Alexander was just unfortunate that he was caught in a fight. The two who were fighting and the two who missed Alexander's dish were already expelled for their reckless actions and there is no evidence that this was set up. Let's just hope everything ends here. Dujima sighed with a tired mentality, some students in this school are like timed bombs. If you harm them. No one knows what can happen to you. With Alexander. He was making his way to his room. He checked the elevators and found them working. He went up to his room and changed his clothes to a baggy hoodie. He struggled to get his cracked arm in. It was really awkward how he was wearing his clothes. After wearing his clothes and being ready, he rested for a bit on his bed. He visualized the situation with his arm and found that the task will be difficult. Too many bottles to open, I should open them earlier before the assignment start and keep their covers loose so I won't keep struggling with them. I was going with a light breakfast burritos with cheese at first but it seems that I'll need to change to an easier one. No matter the situation Alexander visualized, 
His broken arm is still a problem, either because the dish is in need of both of his hands or just hard to make with one hand. Alexander was in a really bad situation now. If only there was something they could do to give him an exception for this assignment. Alas, if there was such thing, Dujima would have told him earlier. Maybe I could work with devil spicy eggs. They are hard to make with one hand but I can handle myself. I can attract more customers with the spice and the strong aroma. With that, I can get more customers with half the effort. Deciding on his dish, Alexander closed his eyes and visualized more scenes in his head to try to prevent any unexpected trouble. The time until the assignment start is 30 minutes. Outside of the hotel, at the parking lot, one of Totsuki's buses is preparing to head out back to Totsuki with 23 new expelled students. One of these students is the two that caused Alexander to fall down the stairs. Will, that really work? We spent so much time waiting for the perfect moment. I'm afraid that he didn't fall hard enough. The green-haired boy asked his friend who was crossing his arms and looking down with a serious expression. It will work, he couldn't move one hand. Definitely, he will get his hand casted. He won't be able to cook, he said with conviction. But his partner is still worried. I'm not sure man. It didn't look that severe. Maybe we should have waited a little more so we can reach higher attitude and then he could have done more damage. Are you an idiot? The black-haired dude hit his friend on the head how about we just kill him then? He looked at his partner as if he was retarded if we did that, he wouldn't break just a hand or a leg. He may die and we wouldn't get out of it that easily, worst case we would be charged with murder. The green-haired boy looked in fear, he didn't think of that. The idea of his and big brother punishing them clouded his head that he tried to do anything to just avoid that man. If only they were his and subordinates and not his big brothers. That guy is the worst human alive. Anyway, we broke his arm. There is no way he can cook with just one hand. When we reach Totsuki, we will report and get out of there. The black haired calmed down and closed his eyes hoping that everything to work out. They were the last two who survived this long in the camp. All the other boys got expelled before they encounter Alexander. Just do us a favor and fail. The boys thought as the bus left the hotel grounds. 6 a.m. Attention all students, it's 6 a.m. now, please head to your assigned hall and prepare to start the assignment soon. The guests will arrive in about 30 minutes, Dujima announced through the speakers in the halls. All the students heard their call and stopped their work and headed to their hall. There are six halls in total, from A to F. The students were shuffled and thrown into different halls. Takumi and Isami are in Hall A with Soma, Megumi, and Erina. In Hall E is Alice, Maito, Yuki, and Ryoko. In Hall F is Ryo and Alexander. In Hall B is Hyama and Hisako. With everyone taking their station, the assignment was about to start. All of the alumni are separated to different halls in groups of two. In Hall F, Alexander made his way to his station. He had asked one of the staff girls to help him in moving the ingredients to his station. Once they saw his arm cast they didn't hesitate to help. His station was Nero's. Once Ryo saw him he greeted him with a bow but his eyes widened when he saw his arm. What happened to your arm? He asked in a monotone voice despite his surprised expression. Some idiots were fighting in the stairs and got me in their mess, so I ended up falling, Alexander responded with an annoyed tone. I see, Ryo said simply. As everyone quieted down and took their station and the people who will oversee this assignment in this hall are going up on the stage. It's Shinomiya and Mizuhara. Shinomiya took the mic and said, Are you done preparing? If you're done then listen closely. This is the conditions that you'll have to meet to pass this assignment. Before Shinomiya could finish the doors were opened and a wave of people of various ages and races came flooding inside you have to prepare 200 dishes for these guests in order to pass. Be careful, some of them are VIP who are suppliers for this hotel. If they didn't like your dish you will get expelled immediately, Shinomiya said. His speech gave the students goosebumps. Are you for real? 200 meals. I am too tired, I can't even make 50 meals straight. This is it for me. This the end. The students are already at a breaking point, they didn't get even an hour of sleep and now they have to make 200 meals and what is even more terrifying is that there is walking expelling machines that can get them expelled. Many students are terrified as hell but for some, it's just the normal Totsuki they know. Like Alexander and Ryo, the two of them didn't mind what they heard, if the requirement is 200 meals then be it. Alexander was holding a bottle of olive oil, he tried to open it but it was stuck damn you, Oyo, help me with this. Alexander handed the bottle to Yahoo took and open it easily. Since you opened that, here open these two. 
Alexander pointed at a row of bottles of spices. What a luck I have, said you. Don't be like that, we're friends aren't we, help me today, I help you another. Alexander patted Rio's shoulder as he laughed. Some students saw their interaction and felt jealous if only I could be as carefree as them. The assignment started and the students started preparing their egg meals. The hall became filled with noises as the guests spread across the hall from being attracted to the aroma of the various dishes. Now, only Alexander was late, only his kitchen fire is on and nothing is being made. He took a deep breath and opened his eyes with fire. Chapter 27, The One-Armed Chef Inside Hall F The guests were following their noses to their favorite dish. Some students have a line in front of them which made them happy and feel like they're on cloud nine, while some aren't doing as good but they can be happy as they are progressing steadily. But the worst is the students who have no one and all their dishes still full and not eaten. One girl is crying as she saw guests walk by her but doesn't spare her meals any second look. Shinomiya is touring around the hall with Ms. Yuhara as he oversees the progress of the assignment. Many students will fail this assignment, if they can't overcome this challenge then their dream of being on top is just a big joke. He looked at the girl who is crying and crying won't help either, the reason people walk away from her is because of her expression. Her expression gives the feeling that her meal is not good. If you're not confident about your food then the guest won't be too. As Ms. Yuhara and Shinomiya were patrolling they suddenly felt a strong and a very desirable smell. They followed their noses and found themselves in front of Alexander's kitchen. Oi boy, hurry up, this old man can't stay here forever. One old man and one of the VIP guests on this assignment is standing at the front of a large crowd who were looking at Alexander with hungry eyes. What is going on here? Ms. Yuhara whispered in disbelief. The last time she checked on Alexander his kitchen was empty and he didn't even start cooking. Just wait, old geezer. Alexander finished his preparations as he finished his first spicy devil egg dish. The dish in itself is an omelette but the egg yolk is surrounding the white of the egg in a perfect circle. He throws hot spices on the nearly finished egg, he put on the plate that has a nicely cooked bacon meat that he has a full bowl of, he prepared them in advance as he knows that just one hand won't be enough to do all that stuff at once. He took a bottle of sweet sauce and poured just a little bit on top of the plate for the bacon. Here you go old man, Alexander prepared another egg and gave the plate to the noisy old man. The old man took a bite with his fork and he felt nirvana inside his mouth. He let out a pleased sound as he saw his younger self in front of him smiling at him as he tells him to eat more. Delicious. This is so delicious, shouted the old man. His words alone made the crowd behind him feel like dying from waiting. All right old man, you took your turn, it's mine now. One man behind the old man said as he advanced to the front. Give me the same at him. He ordered. Right away. Alexander this time didn't take a lot of time to cook the meal as he had put every ingredient in a place he could reach with one hand and remember their location. He could now take anything he wants without even looking at it. His single head is moving swiftly, his body remembers how to do things even with just one hand. If things were in slow motion, then you will see Alexander's hand take one egg and crack it with the pan in front of him and swiftly opens it and pours the white of the egg and leaves the yolk later to surround the white with it. The spices that he throws create an image like that of dust and the sizzling bacon makes sounds like heavy rain. Kids are watching the Aniam chef as he cooks their meals in a speed unimaginable with just one hand. Shinomiya smiled swiftly before he left the crowd. Aren't you going to wait and get a taste? Ms. Yuhara called for him. Nah, I'm not a guest, he said before passing by Yahoo table isn't losing to Alexander's as he makes his dish of egg with tuna. But unlike Alexander, it lacks the strong aroma to attract the far away guests. Also, he curses a lot. Minutes passed by as the students as students went crazy with the small amount of food they served. After an hour, Shinomiya announced, Kurokibayo has finished serving 200 meals. Yo took off his bandana with anger fuck yeah. As soon as the bandana was off, the fire in his head died down and calmed down. His customers from earlier looked at him with shock. Whoa. It's like he is a different person. Isn't it, is that bandana magical or what? Yo looked at Alexander who was serving his customers with passion and a sweaty forehead. He took a towel and wiped the sweat away. Oh. Thank a lot man. I needed that, said Alexander with a big smile. Even Alexander's guests praised you. Hurry up boy, I'm still hungry. The old geezer from before came again and ordered food again. Isn't this your fourth meal? asked Alexander. None of your business, I just want to see my young self again. 
said the old ma, with each meal he takes from Alexander he remembers a happy and an exciting scene from his past. It's a joy for him to remember things that he would occasionally forget. The thing that is working for Alexander is that his guests don't leave, they just go back to the end of the line. Like that he was able to serve 140 meals without spending too much time on promoting his dish. And his guests even call others to take a taste. With just one hand Alexander was able to serve 200 meals to more 150 people in the span of 1 hour and 20 minutes. Sabu Alexander finished 200 meals, announced Ms. Uhara. Alexander wanted to continue but with just one hand and his ingredients being low, he just sat down trying to catch his breath after that long heavy work. Food is served. Alexander let a deep breath. What is served you brat, stand up and serve me another meal. The old geezer came back as he shouted at Alexander. Shoot up old man, don't you see my arm, it's broken, be compassionate will ya? Shouted Alexander at the old man. Who cares? The old man retorted I was just about to remember meeting my wife. Cook me another meal, now. The old man and Alexander started fighting in a comical way that everyone around them was finding them ridiculous with their loud voices. They are matching in their behaviors they thought. And with that, Alexander and Rio were the first ones to finish their assignment. And with them leaving the hall, of course, after Alexander was forced to cook another last meal for the old geezer. The other students finally got a chance as more customers went to their kitchens giving the opportunity to many students to pass. Chapter 28, Families. The next assignment starts in four hours. The time until then is free, Dujima's voice came from the speakers as the assignment was over, but to all students, his announcement was just a reminder that this camp is not over yet. For God's sake, can't they treat us as human beings for once? Alexander was complaining as he walks through the corridors of the hotel searching for his gang. Four hours is barely the minimum amount of sleep needed, Rio added. Alexander was next to him scratching his numb hand. It's been like 43 hours since he moved his hand and it's really annoying. Yeah. And I think that we didn't get to sleep that much either. Alexandre raised his fist in anger. Yo sweat dripped at his words. You slept the camp away, he thought. The two boys made their way from hall to hall. They met Yama getting out of hall B. Yo Yama. Alexander waved at Yama who noticed both of them. Ah, you two, how did it gee what the fuck is that? Kyama pointed at Alexander's arm cursed with shock. Language. I cracked a bone. Alexander and Ryo reached Kyama and he punched him in the shoulder. Let's go see the others. The trio resumed walking with Kyama still looking at Alexander's arm. How did that happen anyway? He asked. His can thus guy break his arm in a span of fewer than five hours. Some fight broke in the stairs between two students and tried to be the hero. Heroes get injured. Alexander shrugged his shoulder. This case is already over for him, but rather he would appreciate it if everyone just stopped asking about it. It reminds him of the pain. What were you even doing on the stairs? This time it was Ya who asked. Kyama too wanted to know, no one in this hotel uses the stairs, they all use the elevators. The elevators weren't working and I had to use the stairs he answered. Both Kyama and Ryo were surprised at this. What are you talking about? asked Kyama. The elevators were working just fine, Ryo said causing Alexander to frown. He didn't answer for a moment before he smiled and said, it must be only that one then. Alexander dismissed this conversation as they reached Hall A. Both Ryo and Kiyama couldn't keep talking about this situation any further. Alexander was fine and that is what is important. They entered the hall and looked around for the rest. Ah. My lady is over there Ryo pointed at their right and they saw Alice with Soma, Irina, Takumi, Isami, and Megumi. They walked there and they heard Soma saying but now I've got the experience of failing. With a confident tone which seemed to annoy a few people especially Alice. She turned with a pout and said anyway, I'm not losing to you people. She decided to leave and look for Alexander, but she didn't need to as she crashed right into his chest. Ouch, what car? Alex Cher what in the sweet sea is that? Alice shouted as she pointed at Alexander's arm. Erina freaked out when she saw what Alice was pointing at. Oh lord. Alexander Sama. She ran to him with a nervous look. Both Alice bombarded him with questions about the situation. Alexander Sweat dropped at their reaction, it was a bit over-exaggerated. Since knowing there will be other people who will ask the same, Alexander called for his brother and Takumi and Isami. When they came and saw his hand, they got the same reaction, and asked a lot of questions. With everyone around, Alexander gave them the situation. 
Takumi felt bad as he blamed himself with what happened to him. Since he if he didn't throw him out he would still be fine. Alexander got an idea and smiled evilly yes, that is right, my arm is broken because of you. So, until my arm is healed you will be my servant and obey all my orders. Alexander pointed at him. Takumi shut his eyes tightly and accepted his fate and took responsibility. This was just a joke by Alexander at first but Takumi took it seriously. Huh? Did he just, accept it? Thought Alexander with a weird face. More importantly, shouldn't we take you to a better doctor? Alice said. She was worried that something may happen to Alexander's arm. Alice is right, we should take you now. Wait a minute Irina took out her phone to call Hisako. Alexander didn't want to exaggerate things, he stopped Irina and said the doctor said it's just a cracked bone, it will heal in a week or two. I don't need a doctor. Besides I need to continue this camp. Everyone agrees but the girl's still worried about him. Soma patted Alexander on his shoulder with a cheeky smile you're really badass Aniki. You completed this assignment with just one hand, you're something else ha ha ha. Soma praised his brother as he patted his shoulder. Then he got hit in the head by Irina and Alice. Keep your hands to yourself. They shouted at him with a deadly glare. Both girls looked like demons to him. Let's go rest first, I think Alexander can, can use that, Isami said. Everyone agreed, the girl especially this time. At another place outside of the training camp, Tokyo. At one of the Red Clouds group's warehouses, Vlad, Alexander's assistance was with his group of bodyguards lazing around. Some were playing cards or just taking a nap, either way, they were just wasting time until they receive any order. Vlad was in a desk with his legs on the table, he was picking his teeth with a toothpick. He looked at his watch and sighed. And was Zakunchili? Have they finished yet? Vlad started speaking in Russian to his henchman. Yeshknet. Not yet, one of them answered. Then go and tell them to hurry, I don't have the whole day. I need to go to get the young boss, Vlad stood up from his chair with an annoyed face. His henchman ran quickly to the only door in this warehouse. As he opened the door, immediately shouting and screaming of people came out from the room behind the door. After a few moments, the door was opened again the henchman came back followed by a large man in all black clothes. He had a large face and a bald head. The most noticeable thing is a long and deep scar in the middle of his face. The man looked to Vlad and walked to him. Did you get everything? Vados. Asked Vlad. He pushed his black hair back and looked at Vados with his green eyes. Vados nodded and spoke with deep and old voice they're just kids, I did give them some hallucination drugs and did some mental torture but all I got is they work for some guy named Etsuyarizan and they were instructed to get in the young boss way, that's all. There is nothing of importance other than that. Vlad sat back on his chair and thought Etsuya, isn't that the name of the local family gang in this city? Vlad thought if this was a coincidence or is it something serious? But he remembered that the boss is in a cooking school, the boys must have missed with his cooking so that's why he got angry. Vlad gave Vados a glance and dismissed him give them more hallucination drugs for today then send them back from where we picked them. Vados nodded and went back to his room. Vlad sighed and continued picking his teeth. He was hoping that things don't get serious now, they are in the middle of establishing a business here and hopefully to get a connection with the number one family in Japan. We need to stay low for the moment. The boss is not here and the young madam is at the world leaders meeting. The oldest young boss is still in Russia with the former boss and his wife. We're currently without a leader. Just a few days then I don't care if the world ended. On another side of Tokyo. At one tall and large building, Etsuya Rizin made his way to the top floor through the elevator. He was greeted by many servants and people through his way there. This is his family's home. Well, it was his family but now it was just a place where he remembers how his parents died. Each time he comes here all he can think of is just how to kill the guy behind this giant door. Rizin knocked on the door two times, he waited for a second before he was allowed in. Once he had entered. He was met with the sight of a large office room with luxurious items all over the place, from famous paintings to ancient items. The room is filled with bodyguards that look like they came straight out of an action movie. Izin stopped in the middle of the room what did you call me here for? He looked at the man on the desk in front of him with an annoyed face but also fear. He didn't want to be here just for another second. Is this how you greet your big brother? The man sitting on the desk is a complete copy of Izen a copy without the glasses and shorter hair and more sharp eyes. But the same face and hairstyle. Say, answered Izen. 
Do I need something to say so I can call my little brother and see if he is okay? The man stood up from his desk and walked to Izan. To Wagata, I don't have time to wast here, Izan said with a frown. Okay okay, then just tell me how is school going? Are the boys I sent to you helpful enough? You're my cute little brother so I don't want you to need anything. To Wagata said with a chuckle causing Izan to deepen his frown. We both know what are these boys with me for and they're not helpful. I tasked them with one thing and they couldn't do it. Izan shouted, he could barely contain his rage and two of them almost killed one student, you sent criminals to my side, take them back, I don't need your help anymore. I can support myself enough. Then I will need to send someone else to watch over you. Tawagata thought deeply as who is the perfect person for this job. I don't need any I said, shouted Izan. Please, this is just safe measurement so I'll be sure you won't go around plotting to overthrow me. My little brother. Izan looked at the man in front of him for a moment before he burst out in laughter. You actually think that I want your position? He said while holding his stomach. Why not, my position is a reason to kill for. Tawagata said with a smirk, he put stress on the word kill making Izan remember the past. I don't such a position that can lead me to death or jail. Keep it to yourself. Izan turned to leave as he looked at his trashy brother with disgust. Ah, before you leave, make sure you don't leave that school for a couple of weeks for now, Togatawa said to Izan before he left the room. What? exclaimed Izan, he was angry at his brother when he heard that. What did he do to get this? Don't misunderstand, it's just there are some hotshots in the city walking around and I may get in trouble with them, so for your sake and mine too, stay inside. Izan was thrown out of the office after that. He was the one leaving and now he was thrown out. How tables turn fast. But anyway, the days of the Etsuya family are numbered, especially for the older brother. Chapter 29, The Training Camp But After that hellish and that cruel assignment of the breakfast buffet, many students failed, the numbers were intense, each hall lost from seven to nine students. Those who passed were happy beyond anything but all of that happiness was crushed by their judges in each hall when they announced that the next assignment will be after four hours. The students who finished rushed to their rooms to rest and relax their mind before going through the next assignment or else many will go crazy. Alexander and the rest were shuffled again each day. On the next day, Alexander was in the same group with Alice, they were paired together to make spaghetti at an Italian alumni chef. Alice was really helpful as she made things easy for Alexander because of his broken arm. All Alexander had to do is say what she needed to do and he did the minimum job. The two of them passed with flying colors. Alice said that she enjoyed the time she spent with him even though it was just an assignment, she enjoyed it. And so the two of them continued to be on the same group for the whole day. At night time, Alexander would take advantage of Takumi's guilt and order him around, he even created a scene of him as a pharaoh and Takumi moving a giant fan to give cold breeze at Kiyama's room. The group was laughing their asses off at how ridiculous Takumi is. But he wasn't enjoying that in the slightest as he vowed to take revenge. As for the fourth day, he was paired with Yama, their group had Chef Hitoshi as their judge. They had to make a curry dish but the twist is they had to make the dish by mixing the Indian and Japanese way of making a curry to come up with something now, half of the group was lost that day. With Yama's nose and a good sense of spices he managed to pass easily, and the same for Alexander, although he finished last because of his arm and slow pace. For the fourth day was the most tragic day for Alexander and Yama's group, by the end of the day, the two of them were the only survivors that day. As for the fifth day, Alexander's whole group was lucky that they were in the same group, their judge was Chef Donato who made them form a group of six. They had to make a full course meal for the hotel's guest, each group was tasked with a hall and a kitchen to cook for twenty tables of people. Basically, they were working as professional chefs temporarily. At first, there was some fighting between Takumi, Ryo, Alice and Hyama who couldn't coordinate with each other perfectly, after all. This is their first group work together, they all tried to leave their presence on the plates. Thus leaving Isami and Alexander doing most of the work while they fight. I swear to God, these four are annoying as hell. Alexander flipped a pan with a fire going up. He was speaking to himself while Ryo is screaming behind him at Hyama and Takumi. We just have to work things out until they figure out how to work together. Isami passed a bottle of oil to Alexander, unlike Alexander he wasn't annoyed or even disturbed at the mess behind them. Lucky you, you're as calm as the day we met. Alexander took the bottle and started mixing a bowl of sauce. He was really impressed at how calm Isami is, he was very unlike him. Alexander is the kind of man who will explode when he is irritated. 
When you work in a restaurant where people shout and talk loudly, this becomes the norm for you. Alexander remember that Isami and Takumi used to work in a dinner before. That's really impressive. Unlike the upper class who speak low in order to keep their conversation a secret, your dinner seems like a nice place to live in. Isami smiled at that and agreed. You idiots, come and help me here. Alexander shouted behind him with anger. The tuna isn't he going to cook itself. Okay, you bastard. Yo left the group fight and came back to make the tuna dish with an angry face. Alexander took the dishes and called for the waiter that was assigned for them. Here take this to table 2 and this for table 11. The waiter was an employee in the hotel. He and his co-workers were scattered to various halls for this assignment. He took the dishes and presented them for the customers and retreated waiting for any order or any arising situation. Things started to calm down in the kitchen and the group started to work together after seeing Alexander about lash out at them. His dark aura was cold they could feel their feet giving up. He looked back at them and said with a cold and smileless face get back to work. As the group was working their last ticket, the old lady from the nearest table came up with her vegetable dish and walked to the kitchen. Young ones, can you, remove these from my dish? The old lady said with a shaky voice. Alexander noticed her and looked at where the waiter is but he saw him busy with another table so he had to take this in his hand what do you want to remove? He asked. The old lady looked up huh? What? Did you, say? I said. What? Do. You. Want. To. Remove. What? Alexander looked at the old lady with a deadpan face yo take the wheel. He then left to do his last dish and handed the mater to you. What the hell do you want to remove? He screamed at her face. Oh. The carrots honey, I can't eat them. The lady gave her dish to Yahoo took the carrots out and gave it to her. After she left, Yo ate the carrots. After a few minutes, the group was done and they completed their assignment. Chef Donato walked inside the hall and came to the kitchen new pass. He smiled at them and gave a thumbs up. The group cheered after that, but Alexander wasn't happy as he wasted too much energy in making these idiots work together. After you rest for a while, please head to the lobby at 4 p.m. Chef Dujima has something to announce. Yeah. They all said with one voice. The only thing they did together without fighting first. Donato left after that. The group went to Hyama's room and after being lectured by Alexandra about their behavior they rested before they head to the lobby. They still can feel the heat from the kitchen from before. Two hours later, Alexander, Alice, Ryo, Takumi Isami, and Hyama headed to the lobby. In their way, they met Soma and his group. The lot of them become noisy on their way down. As they reached the lobby, the view in front was about students lying around in exhaustion and anxiety. They don't know what this could be about, the last time they were told to regroup nothing good happened. I wonder why we're called here? asked Takumi. Who knows? said Alice. There is nothing on the schedule, said Kyoko. Che. Is it another assignment like that one? said Yuki with a grim face reminding everyone about the breakfast assignment. Oh. Bring it on, Takumi said with an excited face. Probably, this set is just like it, but maybe this time it will be a dinner buffet, not a breakfast one, said Alexander. Everyone felt shocked except Alexander's group and Soma who was the same as Takumi. The door was opened and Dujima entered with serious mood, he took the stage and said through the mic, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first congratulate you for surviving till this day. The number of students who were fired until now is 352 students. Dujima's words sent shivers to everyone. It is really true that half of each first year students drop out at this stage. They all thought the same. Dujima continued, it may seem cruel but the cooking profession is much crueler than this to survive in the front lines you must muster all your skills at once. Living as a cook is like roaming inside a dark sandstorm. But you must not forget that on this camp you made comrades that left their footprints together with you on the same sandstorm because that's what will encourage you on your lonely travel inside the storm. Dujima's speech was hitting home for many students. I really wish you the best of luck, he said with an honest expression and tone. Students felt like they were giving a valuable lesson that they shouldn't miss. Then, for the next program, all Dujima's needed to bring the students from their enlightened mood is those few words. Oh my god. I can't. Why did he need to say it? As the students were in despair, the lobby's door was opened with the hotel's staff gesturing inside. Welcome. Where? What is this? This a message to all the surviving 627 students. Congratulations on clearing all the assignments of this camp. The last program is a modest celebration banquet for a banquet. Please enjoy it with all your hearts.
Comma Dujama smiled at the students earnestly, he knows how it feels. The students jumped from happiness as they cheered with all their voices. So it ends here. Alexander said and sighed, it was an enjoyable moment while it lasted. Now everyone, take a seat, we'll have you enjoy a full course meal made by Totsuki's alumni themselves. If the cheering from before was loud then this is far beyond, those shoutings came from their hearts. A meal made by an alumni, now this is something that doesn't happen often. Alice said as she sat down on a table with the gang. The alumni was presenting them with various dishes to choose from. Shinomiya gave his nine vegetables dish to Alexander's table please enjoy. Isn't this what you almost dropped me out for? And you even said please, wow, said Alexander with an exaggerated disbelief. Keep it down will ya? Shinomiya wanted to punch Alexander's face at his remark but he was pulled by Hitoshi, his gang was at disbelief, this guy was making fun of an alumni. The banquet was a moment the students will never forget, some of them will have the chance to attend it again but they will be the one serving the food. The training camp is over and all that is left is going back to Totsuki to see what that school has in store for them. Chapter 30, HTC is over but Totsuki is not. The next day, Totsuki's buses came back and are preparing to leave. My lord. My shoulders are so stiff. Alice rubbed her shoulder with a helpless face as the gang is going down using the elevator. You should have used the massage bath at the middle floors, said Alexander. Ah. There was such a thing as that here? Kiyama with a deadpan face looked at Alice it's your family's property and you don't know about it? I wasn't there when they were planning on building such thing Alice shrugged her shoulders. Everyone knows about it, my lady. Only you didn't bother to know, Yo exposed Alice who hit him in the stomach for it. You're my aide, Ryokun, my aide, not my enemy. If I said I didn't remember then that means I don't remember. I understand, probably. It must be horrible to work under her. Takumi put her hand on Yo's shoulder with pity in his voice. Takumi, you understand? Yo's eyes widened. Hey, stop clowning me. Alice shouted at the boys but only caused everyone to laugh. The elevator reached the bottom floor and got out at the lobby where the rest of the students are waiting for the time of departure. Many of them are on their phones with their families boasting about their success at the training camp. When will we depart? Kiyama looked at Alice. She shrugged her shoulders and replied with a clueless face even though I am intelligent and a very dependable person, I still didn't check the schedule. Nobody said you're reliable. Kiyama looked at Alice with a tick mark on his head. This girl takes every chance to boost herself up, he thought. While the group was getting in some idle chats, the elevator behind them opened revealing Shinomiya and his friends. Shinomiya senpai, Takumi looked behind him and made way for Shinomiya and the others who exchanged greetings. Shinomiya stopped in front of Alexander who was looking at his phone, his assistant sent him a message saying he is waiting outside for him to take him to the Tokyo HQ. After replying, Alexander looked at Shinomiya. Oh, Shinomiya. Alexander and Shinomiya looked at each other for a moment before Alexander said you know, if you're still unwilling in your heart on what we had agreed upon, you can forget about. No need. Shinomiya adjusted his glasses unconsciously and smirked, our fights haven't ended yet, he thought. I will be around, he left with his friends who looked at him. Hingeko looked back at Alexander and smiled gently at him thank you. She then followed the rest. What was that about? asked Takumi. Nothing. Alexander was looking at the alumni leaving, in his head, he thought that his group resembles them a lot, there is a lot of character resemblance between them. Let's go. Alexander left his bag on his shoulder and left with his friends. When the group was about to go up the bus, Alexander gave his bag to Takumi put this in my room for me. Why, aren't you coming? The group looked at him with confusion, especially Takumi who was holding the bag. My car is here, I need to go to the company for some business. He smiled and waved at them before leaving to where his car parked. On the bus, Alice snatched the bag from Takumi and took it for herself. Takumi could only look with confusion. Vlad. Alexander's assistance was in the car's parking lot. He and his men are waiting for Alexander to arrive. There is a lot of cars with the main car being a Range Rover. After a few minutes, Alexander showed up. Vlad's looked stunned as his cigarette fell from his mouth. He looked at Alexander's arm and pulled his gun slowly please, give us the name. The others too pulled their guns and prepared for an assault on whoever was the reason. Sadly, I don't know either. You can call Faker to hack the security system and get hold of some videotape and the student's information later on. Alexander entered his car with Vlad who retrieved his gun back. Let's go and see what we can do, 
Alexandra ordered the driver to take off and the line of cars moved. They passed by the buses of Totsuki and Alice and the others could see Alexander's cars passing them by. What is there that I need to do? Alexander asked Vlad who was working with a laptop and typing something. A window popped up with a schedule there is a lot for this day. Some construction papers need to be signed, a new factory that in need of a chief manager, and a dinner with the Romano family's head. Vlad looked at Alexander. Isn't the Romano family located in Italy, why are they here? He asked. Vlad nodded and tried to explain there was no reason, their business is still running in Italy and there are no cops after him. After all, everything that man does is clean, and he doesn't go an all-crime mob like the rest. But the reason he is here is, he got married. Vlad couldn't even believe his own words, a powerful man feared by the whole Italian mobs and cops moved to live in Japan because he got married. Alexander nodded in understanding can happen, so, he married a Japanese woman or he just moved with no particular reason? Yes a Japanese woman. They even have a daughter? I heard he is planning on retiring from all this business and marry his daughter to some strong family. Vlad typed on his laptop and a picture appeared on it, he showed it to Alexander. Who? So this is his daughter, and the reason he wants to have dinner with me is? Yes, probably to talk with you about you and his daughter for possible marriage and joining the two families. I guess he heard the rumors about the Helmet family's new head being you. Vlad took off his glasses and wiped them clean his daughter is older than you possibly by two years, it's not strange and Lord Elfie had already taken his third wife so there is no room for another. Alexander sighed and looked out of the window, I don't mind adding the Romano family to our side, it is not a bad idea. Chapter 31, let's go on a. I. I never wanted to do this but here it is, my family store was robbed today. A huge amount of money was lost and we are really in a dire situation now. If you guys can donate to my pattern for this month only, that would be great. A thief broke in and took with him the place where we hide the money that we buy new products with. I would be thankful if you could donate but either way, you don't have to. Just please don't call me out for this, it's the only way I could help out my family after what happened. Into the chapter. Tokyo. At a tall building with a giant red cloud logo on top. Alexander is at his office going through a mountain of papers. Alexander's head is low and fixed on his desk, his hand is going as fast as the human hand can. He signs each paper with fast speed. God damn it, why do I need to sign this? This is my uncle's work. Alexander looked at Vlad beside him, his eyes demand an answer. Vlad adjusted his glasses Lord Alfie is, busy. Since when you started covering up for him? A sweat drop came down from Vlad's cheek as he smiled nervously ha ha. Well, the thing is, he asked me to. Alexander glared at Vlad with a complicated eye, he is confused between punching Vlad or his uncle. Ultimately he pulled his phone and dialed a number. He put his phone on his ear and waited, and waited. And waited even more. I swear to G before he can finish, the phone connected. Uncle. The number you're trying to reach is not available. A soft and sweet voice came from the phone, Alexander was fooled for a second before he snapped. You fucking retard. You have one day to fly from Russia to Japan, or I will fly to Russia, he shouted in his phone. He waited for a moment before a man's sound came oh hey my dear nephew, the call just connected. Do you need me for anything? Alfie. Alexander's uncle said with a playful voice. You have work to do here in Japan, while I have a school to attend, I've been here for three days straight. Alexander rubbed his forehead to relieve the headache you either fly here in the next 24 hours or... I'm telling Grandmama he said the last part with an overdramatic tone, he could swear that he heard something crash on the other side of the phone. Hold your horses my Alexi, I'm on my way, I was just taking off some business here. Alfie shouted from the other side with a nervous voice there is no need to call mother. Then you better hurry, I'm leaving a timed message in my office, it will be sent to Grandmama in the next 25 hours, so you better hurry up. What? Alfie screamed as Alexander hang up on him. He turned to Vlad what else do I need to sign? Vlad handed him a small red documents. This is the last, he said. Alexander took the document and opened it, after a quick read he said oh. This is the firearm deal we made in the past year with Don Cristo from Germany. Why is this here? he asked. Don Cristo asked for the double of the usual items. Vlad bent down a little and said with a low voice the first page is the first contract while the second is the new one. Alexander took the second page and read through carefully, there was nothing noticeable in it. It was just a new contract with double the items and double the money. 
Is he in some kind of family war or what? Alexander asked and signed the paper. Apparently. Alexander stopped his movement s for a moment and his eyes golden eyes turned cold for a moment Vlad. He called. Yes. Haven't you noticed something strange lately? He asked mysteriously. Vlad couldn't understand the purpose of Alexander's words so he had to say I don't think I did, sir. For the past months, many of our close families and the people we do business with are getting in some trouble. Don't you find this a little... strange? Vlad's eyes witness at this, once he thought about... It is really strange. Don Cristo's family is a strong family that has a strong deal of firearm with them. And many other gangs and businesses are getting in trouble too. The one thing common with all of them is they are close to the Helmet family and our business partners. Some are even tied with blood since Master Alfie took three wives recently. Yes, it is strange. Should I send a team to investigate? Vlad's eyes became sharper and more serious. He waited for Alexander's orders to act at once. No. Alexander raised his hand just one, just send one person. But who? asked Vlad. His green eyes wondered who this person could be. Send Kinu, and tell him, he has all the freedom he wants in this mission. Alexander stood up sharply and walked to the door. Vlad was surprised with the sudden move of Alexander and asked with the nervous expression young master, to where? He was afraid that Alexander will do something irrational. Alexander stopped and looked at the worried Vlad don't worry. I am just going to choose the new chief manager for the new factory. You contact Kinu, I will take Baldi Vados with me. Then Alexander left. Vlad sighed and took his phone and called. Yes, it's me, the young lord has work for you with a serious voice. Vlad spoke to the person called Kinu. On the other side of the phone, a man is in his forest house playing with his puppy in a white tank top. His hair is black as the night with a split in the middle. His puppy is white with black spots. The man played with his puppy and held his phone with the other. If this is Lord Alexander's orders then, his deep and low voice sounded in the room with an echo consider it done. Three days later, Alexander finished all the necessary business he needs to do as the Helmet family's head and took off. All that is left is the dinner with the Romano family head which will be held in a week. In his car with Vados who is his current assistant while Vlad is away. Alexander's phone range, he took it out and answered. New phone who is this? Huh? Is this Sabu Alexander? The person calling was confused. Who's asking? I'm Shinomiya Kojiru, an acquaintance. Alexander was surprised to hear it's Shinomiya and what is even more surprising is his he got his phone number. He doesn't remember giving him his phone. Oh, Shinomiya. It's me, Alexander. What's up? Shinomiya didn't answer for a moment I hate you. But anyway, I am in Japan, I had moved my restaurant here, so I'll be sending you the address soon, said Shinomiya and that's it, I hope I don't see you soon. He then hangs up. Alexander chuckled at this and removed his phone. It was sunset now, and he was tired of the constant working hours. Thank God, Alexander's uncle, Alfie arrived as he promised and took a huge load of work from his shoulder or he would have collapsed long ago. Alexander's car followed by his guard entered Totsuki and headed to the North Star dorm. Alexander entered and saw the old Natasha warming herself in front of the chimney. They exchanged a few words before he went up to his room to take a nap. Alexander jumped on his bed without taking his clothes off. God, what a week. Alexander remembered his days in Totsuki's hellish camp and then him running around his family's business. Alexander closed his eyes to get some peace and a good time of rest, but not for long. While Alexandra is sleeping, sounds of hurried feet are approaching his room. Alice burst into his room and jumped on his body. Alex Jin. She shouted and opened his eyes, with a cheerful expression filled with anticipation let's go on a date, she said. Ouch. My arm. Dot. Chapter 32 Alice and Darina. Boy, I am really scared about this chapter. Hope you enjoy it. After Totsuki's hellish training camp was over. Classes resumed and students were glad that they will never have to go there again, but after a second thought, they all shivered in fear after realizing that the training camp is only the first obstacle to pass and there is many more to come. Alice exited her class with Ryu. I'm telling you, Ryo-kun, me and you are definitely gonna be part of the autumn selection this year. Alice was telling Ryo about the autumn selection and when will it take place. I know that, Ryo said with a monotone voice. Moo. No emotions at all Alice complained about Ryo's lack of motivation. While Alice is complaining, in front of her there was a lot of commotion. And it was getting nearer. After a while, 
It turned out to be Irina who was causing her fans to go wild. The two cousins met in the hallway and immediately the atmosphere turned cold. Isn't this my precious and dear cousin? Alice put her hand on her mouth in disbelief long time no see, she said. Irina smiled at her one week to be precise, she said, you still run around Alexander Samar? Alice's smile froze on her face as she said, and what about it? The atmosphere was so uncomfortable and cold that the two girls aides who witnessed this many times felt this isn't going to end well this time. Nothing. Irina shrugged her shoulders I was just wondering when will I stop seeing you every time around him? It's annoying. Alice didn't answer for a moment, Joe wanted to get Alice to leave and end this here but he wasn't fast enough and why should I do that? Last time I checked you weren't his girlfriend Irina felt her face go hot and if I remember correctly, you act like this only when he is not around. Once you're in the same room, you turn into a typical stupid girl who can't handle herself Alice wanted to let everything out but Irina wasn't going to take it like this. Neither was you, she said, Ryo and Arato backed away from their ladies and so did the other students. They left this place and let the girls fight. The last time I checked, you weren't his girlfriend either, all you do is stick around like a glue annoying and preventing any girl from being close to him while you yourself don't even have the courage to say your feelings. Irina and Alice faced each other so close maybe you don't even love him anyway. Alice gasped me. She questioned. In this case that would that be you isn't it? Said Alice. What do you mean? I mean, looks with mockery at Irina whose face is red from anger and embarrassment all you love about Alexandra is his ability to cook. I doubt that you even love him as a person. Irina looked in disbelief at Alice. I, I do n. Can't blame you though, you can't even control that tongue of yours anyway. Alice stuck her tongue out in mockery of Irina's god tongue. Irina's body trembled as she clenched her fists the only reason you're doing this is because you know how I feel, she said, you had always wanted revenge on me and maybe this is how you are doing it, Irina's eyes are shadowed by her bangs as she spoke. Alice humphed nobody cares about that revenge anymore, and to think that I would try to get Alexander just because I want revenge Alice smiled this is the pinnacle of stupidity. Irina snapped at Alice then why didn't you confess to him all these years? You spend the most time with him, you had many chances to do so, then why? Irina took heavy breaths and waited for Alice's respond but it never came. Alice passed by Irina and called for you. HMPH. You think you're the center of the world. I'm going to show you, thought Alice. The students peeked from the corridors. Arato came to check on Irina Irina's armor. Irina straightened her back and tidied her clothes, I'm sorry you had to see this unsightly scene, let's go, I have more important matters to attend to. Irina left to the teachers rooms for a small meeting for the autumn selection. Arato couldn't help but feel worried about her master, but she can't interfere in the household's inside matters, she would be stepping over her boundaries by this. Through the whole ride to the dorm, Alice was in a bad mood, something Ya had never witnessed before, he sat with her in the car silently for the first time ever in his service for her. He wanted to speak and lift the mood but he wasn't that great with words. It's better to stay silent for the moment, he thought. Alice is looking out of the window thinking about that encounter with Irina. We went overboard back there, she reflected, what started with mere mockery and teasing turned serious in an instant. She never wanted to take things seriously but when they questioned each other's love for the same man, they wanted to bring the other down as much as possible. She sighed and thought more about this. This accident may cause a huge rift between her and Irina, a bigger rift than the current one. The car reached the dorm after sunset. Alice and Rio got out and entered the dorm. They were greeted with Natasha who is warming her body with chimney. Good evening, Natasha. Alice hugged the old Natasha. Rio too sat in front of the chimney to warm his body. It's getting cold these days even though it's July is the Aldini's brothers and Hyama back yet? Alice wanted to wast some time to forget today's accident. Natasha shook her head but Alexander came back earlier, she said. Alice's body froze as flashbacks of the earlier conflict came back to her. Then why didn't you confess to him all these years, you just want to get in my way. She remembered that line, that what pissed her the most. Alice stood up sharply and ran upstairs. I'm going to show you, Irina, I'm gonna do it, she shouted in her headed, she made her way to Alexander's room with a rush. I'll be the first one to take the first step, I'm no longer ready to wait, she thought. Alice opened Alexander's door and shouted with a cheerful voice in contrast with her earlier mood. Alex Jin, she jumped on his body on the bed. 
Alexander groaned in pain from the impact and opened his eyes slowly to find Alice staring in his eyes with anticipation let's go on a date, she said. My arm, he shouted. And looked at her with confusion before he realized her words meaning a what? he asked. Chapter 33, Alice. Forgive me, I wasn't in the best mental state to write, too many things were on my mind. I am trying to finish my stuff here at our shop so I can go back to the daily chapter schedule. Today, we officially reached 4k collections and 1m views. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My arm. Alexander shouted as Alice almost crushed his cracked arm. He looked at her hatefully for a moment before he dismissed the idea. If it was someone else they would get a hole in their chest for this but since it's his friend then Alexander can't do anything to her. Alice looked at Alexander with a big smile on her face let's go on a date she repeated herself, she didn't even mention his she almost broke his arm. What? Now? Alexander looked outside of his window and saw it was dark. It's the perfect time for a date, don't you think? Alice left Alexander's body and stood straight. She extended her hand for Alexander. He looked at her hand for a moment before taking it what kind of date are we talking about here? He wanted to know what is behind Alice and did she just suddenly wanted a date? I don't know, she shrugged her shoulders, why don't we try to figure that out? Alexander sighed and dropped his shoulders, he pushed his hair back with his free hand let's see where this is going? He thought. This strange situation may lead to something unexpected. Yeah, let's figure that out. Alice jumped from happiness yay, wait for me outside until I dress up she ran outside of the room to her own room. Alexander looked at his arm here we go again. He proceeded to take off his clothes in an awkward manner again. This what he hates about broken body parts, they all make your daily life an awkward movie. He took a nice branded hoodie from his closet and a pair of jeans. He took the out his phone and called Vados, his temporary assistants until Vlad returns. Vados, bring the car real quick. I am going out for some sightseeing. Vados accepted the order and prepared the cars and headed to Totsuki with fast speed. Alexander went downstairs and greeted Ryo and Natasha who were warming their bodies and watching TV. What are you watching? he asked. Natasha chuckled a love comedy show, she said. Very good commented Ryo. His eyes never left the TV, looks like he found something entertaining. Alexander shook his head and left the dorm and waited for his car to arrive. After ten minutes a parade of cars arrived at the front door. Vados got out of the car and gestured for Alexander to get in. Not yet, I am waiting for Alice to come out Alexander leaned on the car. Boss, about the boys who caused you to fall down the stairs, Vados neared Alexander and said with a low voice. And what about them? Alexander wasn't even interested in this as he played some word game with his phone. We got hold of them, Vados continued after giving some drugs they confessed right away, they work for someone called Detsuya Rizen. He is the current ninth seat of this school. Is that so? The phone light us shining on Alexander's face as a hint of coldness flashed in his eyes for a moment continued. He ordered. Yes. Apparently, the boy named Detsuya Rizen took it upon himself to get revenge for his business partner. His partner is called Mayuri Jintaro, he is the boy who you destroyed his business after he caused some trouble to the new restaurant in his area. Vados stopped for a moment then continued both of them are behind this. Vados waited for Alexander's reaction. Are they really the only ones? He asked with mockery I can't imagine a single student who dares to push someone e off the stairs for someone else, let alone two at a time. You didn't finish your report. Alexander gave Vados a side glare causing Vados to sweat a little. It is as you said, boss. The two boys don't actually work for the ninth seat but for his elder brother. He is the leader of the local Yakuza family in Tokyo. He instructed the boys to do anything to ensure his brother's orders are fulfilled. So we have three people to get. Alexander put his phone back in his pocket and looked at Vados but first, keep the two in the warehouse until I'm free for them. Call my uncle and tell him about this Jintaro boy and let him pay a visit to his parents' house. Vados bowed slightly and entered the car to make the phone call. While Alexander is playing with his phone and leaning on his car, a faint sound of an engine is getting closer. It kept on getting closer and closer until Alexander looked up to see two lights coming through the gate. It was the two motorcycles he gave the Aldini brothers. Takumi and Isami stopped the bikes in front of Alexander. Behind Takumi is Hyama who asked, Did you just arrive? Alexander put his phone in his pocket yeah, but I am leaving with Alice. I see, Takumi and the boys got off the bikes and removed their helmets and here I thought about challenging you to a match again, 
Dr. Kimi was a little disappointed. Nichen, Alexander's hand is still hurt, leave the challenge to after he is okay, Isami told Takumi and pointed at Alexander's hand, Takumi couldn't help but agree. Kiyama massaged his stiff shoulder with his hand and sighed then I'm off to sleep. He turned and headed to the front door of the dorm followed by Takumi and Isami after they parked the bikes near the door please take care of yourself, said Isami before he closed the door, Alexander only nodded at him. Time went by and another 15 minutes passed, a frown started forming on Alexander's expression. Just how much time does it take for a girl to wear some goddamn clothes? He spoke to himself and scratched his elbow, it was numb and itchy for us sometimes. Let me go see what she is doing. Alexander headed to the front door and opened it. As soon as he did, he froze in his place. No amount of words could describe the sight he is seeing right now. Alice is behind the door, wearing a long red dress. A golden necklace with a letter A, a pair of earrings of diamond in the shape of a fire. Her eyes are looking a little down just enough to show her full beauty. Her snow hair is made in a way that her bangs are in front covering some of her forehead and eyes, enough to give you a mature and alluring feel. Alexander stood in his place looking at Alice with his jaw on the floor, Alice looked at him and giggled as she saw her hard work didn't go to waste. Behind her are Natasha and the gang having the same reaction as Alexander. She walked slowly as the red and black high heels echoed in the hall shall we go? She asked with a small smile. She extended her hand to Alexander who took it subconsciously. When he came back to his sense, he was already in the back seat of his car with Alice beside him. Vados is the one driving this time. He was waiting for his master's orders. Alexander looked at Alice for one more time then he looked at himself. He frowned and ordered Vados take me first to the best clothing store nearby. I need a suit. Alexander was serious as hell now. He wasn't going to accompany Alice around in a hoodie while she is in a high-class dress that costs thousands of dollars. As you wish, boss. The cars took off and headed outside of Totsuki. The night was still young and long. It got so many surprises for the young teens. Even for them, they would never expect how this night was gonna end. But only with time will they know. Chapter 34, Plus Alice. I'm pretty nervous about this chapter, I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Slash. If there is any mistake, please do tell me in a paragraph comment, please. Slash. Too serious. Plain. Too formal. Inside of Tokyo's most luxurious clothing shops, all staffs are running around the shop with different styles of suits as if their life depends on it. Alice was sitting on a chair waiting for Alexander to come out from the changing room. Inside Vados is helping him with another employee. He got out with a red suit and white suit, Alice looked for a moment with a thoughtful expression too bright, she said. Grrr Alexander groaned at Alice who just took a cookie and ate not minding Alexander at all. For her, the date started the moment she got in the car and she is willing to get the most of it. Why don't you go around and look for a good one Alexander gave up and sat beside Alice and sighed. Alice giggled and stood up, her red dress is shining under the heavily lighted room. Just by walking and looking around, she seems like a Greek goddess. Alexander's eyes followed her figure and sighed. His heart is pumping fast. This is the first time he saw Alice like this, not even her sticking her boobs and body to him made him like this. Something about her today is making his blood run crazy inside his body. Alice looked around the suit section followed with two females employees. How about this one, young lady? One of them pointed at a golden suit. No Alice refused it instantly. Then, this one for sure. The other one pointed with sweat going down her cheek at one blue suit. Alice looked at it for a moment, she instructed the girl to get it for her. The female employee ran fast and got the suit out of its plastic and handed it to Alice. She looked at it carefully. The suit is blue with a nice feel to the fabric like you are touching a cloud. It didn't feel rough but either soft. The buttons were in gold giving it a majestic feel to it. Alice imagined Alexander in it and smiled he would look so dashing in it. This one. As soon as Alice said that, the girls felt so glad, this girl was gonna flip the store upside down if she continued, they thought. Alice gave Alexander the suit try this she said. Alexander took it and headed to the changing room, Vados and the other employee helped him to wear it probably, each time Alexander got to try a new suit he would curse the two who did this to him making him even more eager to meet them and treat them nicely. After changing he got out and immediately Alice shouted with a slight blush on her face so handsome, she said. Alexander smiled and forgot about being annoyed when she smiled too. He checked himself in the mirror and thought thanks mom and dad for your hard work he thanked his parents for giving him good genes. 
All right to annex destination Alice grabbed Alexander's hand and ran with him outside. Vados, pay for this and give them some tip. Alexander shouted as they exited the store. Even though she is wearing high heels, Alice can run pretty fast. Both of them are running in the streets while people are looking at them, boys are looking at Alice with a red face only to get deadly glares from Alexander. The girls looked at Alexander with a blush as they admired his look earning Alexander a few curses from random boyfriends. Where are we going? Alice. Alexander shouted as both of them kept on running in the night streets. To the theater. We're gonna watch a movie, like a couple. She replied. She deliberately added the part of a couple so Alexander can get a hint. What are we watching? He shouted again. Let's reach the theater first. She replied. Both of them kept on running, the theater wasn't that far, just seven minutes and they reached it. Alexander's henchmen are running behind them but are making sure they keep their distance so they don't disturb them. When Alexander and Alice reached the theater, they stopped to catch their breaths. So, what are we watching? Alexander asked Alice as she leaned on his back. Let's see the board and decide, I heard there are some good movies this week. Let's see. Both of them went to the giant board and looked intensely at it. People passing by saw them as crazy with those intense glares. This one Alice pointed at the right poster. This one Alexander pointed at the left poster. Both of them looked at each other for a moment and smiled. We will go with my pick, right? They said simultaneously. Their smile never faded but a cold aura surrounded them. An action movie on a date? You must be joking. Alice giggled. And why the hell would I want to watch a romantic movie on a date? Said Alexander. Because, because, Alice's face turned red as she wanted to say why but at the same time couldn't it's not the right time, not the right time, Alice, pull yourself together she thought. Anyway. Alexander extended his hand and firmed a fist rock, paper, and scissors, he said. Alice froze in her place for a moment before she leaked a crafty smile why not, she said but for your information. She joined her hands and raised them with cold eyes, I had never lost once, she said. Rock, paper, scissors. They shouted and the result was, Alice won. Yay, we're gonna watch the romantic one. Alice went to get the tickets while Alexander is still looking at his hand that is formed as a rock. Alexander's men in the background are smiling to them. This seems like a slice of life show. They forgot that they were guards for a moment before they turned serious immediately. Alice and Alexander entered the cinema to watch the movie. In the middle of the movie, Alice took hold of Alexander's arm. She leaned on him slightly to reveal her body making his blood run inside of his body like crazy. The movie wasn't that bad for Alexander but to Alice, it was very emotional as she cried during the death scene of a hero after the boat sank in the water. But Alexander found it stupid just share the wood log with him you cunt. He thought. He wasn't alone who thought like this, all males and even his henchmen at the back of the hall who are watching with him and thought the same as Alexander. Yes, they are watching Titanic. After the movie ended both of them left the cinema. Alice is wiping her tears. After she calmed down she looked at Alexander who was messing with his arm cast how was the movie? Wasn't it romantic? I told you it was good. Alice said with red eyes from crying. No. It was a horror movie. Alexander said bluntly, not even caring to disguise his dislike for the movie. Why? Alice was shocked at how can someone find the movie a horror film. He died in the end, all because she couldn't move her ass a few millimeters so they can share that wooden log. And probably every male in that movie died. Alexander started ranting about his dislike of the movie. What are you talking about? He gave his life for her, he was a hero who died for love. Alice defended the movie with all she got. Let's walk first, I don't want to talk in front of the cinema. Both of Alexander and Alice started walking under the night skylight by the street lights. Although it's night time this area is still lively and filled with people and couples going around. There are food stalls all over the place. I'm telling you, the guy was a hero, he protected the woman he loves with his life, that's the definition of romance right there. How the fuck is that romantic? He died, alright. It's a tragedy. Why does every girl in the world consider that movie romantic? Hundreds of people died in there, more than half of them are men Alexander argued back since when death became a love story. As the two of them are walking by, many couples who left the cinema after them are walking in front of them, besides them and behind them. Them boys are cheering for Alexander in their hearts you tell them, brother. That's the way. A revolutionary. While the girls are just looking at their boyfriends with cold glares meaning to say don't ever try. Alexander and Alice continued to argue for some time until they reached the riverbank. 
This place is a popular place for couples and it attracts many stall owners. Alexander leaned against the fence bear and sighed well, are you going to tell me what is this all about? Alice stopped pouting and her heart skipped a little, her face turned red and hot from fear and anxiety, she gave her back to Alexander and clenched her dress I can do this. I can, there is no reason for him to refuse, she was assuring herself with everything she got. He may not have a reason but that doesn't mean he will accept either everything or nothing she thought. Alexander was still waiting for Alice to speak, his eyes are looking at her back, her white hair is shining under the street lights. Alice turned around slowly. I thought I gave enough hints already, she said with a smile and a red face. You did. Alexander tilted his head and thought for a moment. Care to remind me? Alice was fidgeting and playing with their fingers from nervousness. Why do you think I called you for a date? I don't know. Alexander shrugged his shoulders. His henchmen who were close by wanted to rip their hair from the tension. Their boss was a cruel man to pretend like he doesn't know what is going on, they thought. You see, Alexander, Alice's eyes and ears are turning even more than before I, I, for a long time now, I have been in. She couldn't even say a proper sentence from how scored she is. She knows that her move now may even damage her relationship with Alexander and they can never return like before. It's either a success or a failure. But she finally decided to risk it all. I've been in love with for a long time, she said. The area turned silent, Alice is trembling, waiting for Alexander's respond. But before she realized it she found herself in his embrace me too, he said. It is true, Alice was the only girl he spent the most time in the world, she was energetic, optimistic and fun to be with. The way she carried herself around him was pleasing. How she didn't hide behind a facade made him admire her true personality. Alice had feelings for Alexander when they were young and so did he, but for him. This feeling only developed and matured after they reached their teens and started to see each other more. Each time they met they would spend enough time with each other while separated they think about each other. Love is truly mysterious. It comes in many forms and ways and childhood friends is one way it comes with. The nearby people cheered for them and congratulated them. Alice looked around her and found many people looking at her with a big and bright smile. I, I did it. She couldn't believe herself I really did it. She felt her legs go weak and they couldn't even support her. Alexander gave her his hand to stand up when my hand is back to work. I'll make sure to give you a princess carry that you deserve now, but for now, walk with me home. Alice felt her heart squeeze really hard as tears slowly descended from her red eyes. She stood up with his help and buried her face in Alexander's chest. They decided to end this here and it was time to return home. They headed where Alexander's car is parked and his henchmen are waiting. The nearby henchmen who witnessed thus high-fived each other and passed down money to each other. They were betting if the young boss gonna return with a girlfriend tonight or not. Turns out he did, and very beautiful and stunning one on top of that. Alexandra would be so happy to hear that her son got for himself for a girlfriend and potentially, a wife. Chapter 35, Payback Currently, I'm busy so I don't have time to check the spelling mistakes, it will help if you could pinpoint my mistakes in a paragraph comment. Thank you. After Alice confessed her feelings to Alexander last night, both of them had dinner at Alexander's newly opened restaurant, he reserved the whole thing just for them, the only people who were allowed inside are Alexander's bodyguards and the chefs. Alice and Alexander talked during the dinner about their childhood and how each one of them developed feelings for the other. And surprisingly, both of their feelings started to bloom for each other since they first met. Well, that was just for Alice but for Alexander he only took a liking to her at that time, his love for her would bloom only after their constant separation after each time they met, he would crave to meet her again and again. His love for Alice came from how she was so straightforward and never tried to fake her feelings for others. Honestly. Alice took a sip of her juice and with a small blush, she said to Alexander across the table, I had never expected that you would accept my confession that easily. Alexander who was eating with his left hand looked at Alice with a surprise what are you talking about? He said you don't even know how much my uncle and mother made fun of me due to not getting together with you earlier. Alexander remembered his uncle's playful and devilish teasing smile and his mother's smug face whenever he talked about Alice. Are you serious? Alice covered her mouth with her small hands and giggled. Yeah. You should have seen them, they were so annoying. Alexander started telling her about his interaction between him and his family. Alice was happy to hear about his family, Alexander was enjoying recalling his fun time with his family, it made Alice wish she is part of that family too. All right. Alexander stood up we should call it a day he gave his hand to Alice who took it gladly. 
Both of them left the restaurant, the waiters cleared the table and the bodyguards followed behind them. In the car, Alice looked at Alexander's arm when will you take your arm cast off? She asked. Alexander looked at his arm and remembered what happened to him oh yeah, I haven't finished with those two he thought. In the next day, the doctor will visit and take it off Alexander smiled at Alice and ruffled her hair which caused her to be annoyed that the hairstyle she spent a half an hour in making is wasted but she couldn't get any more angry at Alexander, in the end, to whom did she dress up tonight? The two of them kept on talking through the whole ride home. With Alice, there was never any lack of topics to talk about. The cars reached Tatsuki and entered the North Star dormitory. Alexander and Alice stood in front of the front door and their hearts were beating very fast. He. Alexander tried to grab Alice's attention, she turned to him and her face was red. Both of them got closer to each other. Alice closed her eyes which made Alexander know what is gonna happen. His henchmen are looking from inside the cars with anticipation. Seaman boss. This is it. Do not hold back. Now, kiss. And it happens. Alexander mustered his courage and kissed Alice softly, the feeling of her soft and sweet lips made him feel crazy. He craved more and he got more. His hands wandered around her body making her quiver. Both of them are inexperienced and only followed their instinct. After a long moment of passionate kissing, both of them separated from each other. Alice covered her mouth with a red face, her breath is rough and so is Alexander's, too will, go now. She left Alexander with this and dashed inside leaving Alexander looking at her departing figure. He still can't believe he just got himself a girlfriend. He had always believed that his position would force him to get an arranged marriage first rather a genuine love of a woman he had known for long. He was thankful and happy that he met her from the bottom of his heart. Alexander sighed and turned to his henchmen who got out of their cars and bowed to him congratulations. Boss, all of them, thirty men bowed to Alexander and shared his happiness. It only made Alexander happier. Thanks, but before that. Alexander's voice changed from soft to harsh in an instant we still have work. Take me to the two who broke my arm. Alexander commanded Vados and his henchmen. Of course. Vados opened the door, he was more excited than Alexander himself to meet the two boys who broke his boss arm, and he wasn't alone in this, all of the current thirty men shared the same feeling. If the boss didn't order to hold their actions they would have swarmed the school and any place the boys may be in until they get them out. The cars took off from Totsuki and headed to the Red Cloud warehouses. When the cars reached there, it was 3 a.m. Alexandra entered the warehouse and found a few more of his subordinates. They bowed to him at one and shouted Molod oi boss. Young boss. Alexander nodded at them and looked at Vados who pointed at the only door in this warehouse. Bring them to me. Alexander ordered Vados and went to sit on the only desk here. This warehouse doesn't have anything to decorate, it only ceiling and floor with a few chairs scattered around and one single desk that the boss or whoever inside the warehouse is the top rank to sit on. All of the men took a position and made two lines and a path between them. Alexander was sitting at his desk and looked under it. Who's the doctor of this group? Alexander asked the men. One man ran to him and bowed it is me, boss. Alexander raised his arm cast and said, take this shit off me. The doctor looked at the arm cast for a moment before he said can I examine if it's safe to do that first, he asked. You can. Alexander let the doctor grab his tools and work on his arm. After a few moments, the doctor removed the arm cast and said all good, boss. You can use your arm just fine. The doctor packed his stuff and retreated. Thanks, said Alexander as he moved his arm and hand around trying to shake off that numb feeling in them. Vados brought the two boys through the path made the henchmen. They were blindfolded and had many bruises on their bodies, they were trembling so much and looking around them trying to figure out what's going on. Vados and the other man who brought the two kicked the back of their legs so they can kneel. Take their blindfolds away, Alexander ordered, one man stepped in and took them off. The boys shut their eyes from the light in the warehouse and tried to adjust to the light as they groaned from the pain. After they were able to see clearly, they looked around and saw more than forty-five men surrounding them. The coward in fear as tears fell down their cheeks. Who are you people? What do you want from us? The green-haired boy asked as his eyes resembled a hurt dog. His black-haired friend joined in and said if you want money then we're not rich, we're orphans, we don't have money. Seeing that the boys were getting louder and louder. Alexander snapped his fingers and Vado stepped in and slapped each one of them two times. The boss is here. You do not speak without being asked to. His eyes looked cold and murderous, the two boys felt their lower region getting wet and hot. They peed in their pants. You too. 
Alexander called causing the two to look behind at the source of the voice. Their eyes widened when they saw Alexander there sitting with his legs crossed on the desk. They felt fear and their heart tightening when they saw Alexander's amused smile. You, police, help us, we're students, classmates, right? As soon as the green-haired one spoke, he was punched again by Vados I said, only speak when you're asked to. The green-haired boy held his face as his mouth bleed. He can feel his tooth broken, but he held his tears and voice. His black-haired friend learned from his friend and shut up. He only looked at Alexander and waited for him to speak. Thank you. Alexander chuckled and thanked Vados now, you two, tell me your names. He demanded from the boys, they took a moment to process his words due to their fear, but they felt Vados preparing to move again so they hurried and said. Three am Midarianatsu, said the green-haired boy. I am Akari Shiro, said the black-haired boy. Both of them said with shivers going down their spines as they felt Vados back off. Alexander smiled at them. Oki, Mr. Midariu, and Mr. Akari. Alexander's smile turned to a grim frown and his voice became harsh. Why did you push me off the stairs? He asked. His aura and voice say that he won't accept any lies. And for every time you lie to me. He added and took a pocket knife from under his desk. I will cut off each of your fingers. And once we're done with the fingers, I will change how that face of yours looks like. So choose wisely. He from his desk and walked to the boys. Now, speak before I change my mind. He said as he put the knife on Midaria's face. Midaria was so scared as his sweat fell down like crazy, his tears fell down too mixed with snot. If, if, I tell you, will you let us go? He asked. Alexander punched him in the face breaking his nose I am not negotiating. Midaria fell to the floor with two teeth out of his mouth, he held his mouth and screamed in pain. Alexander ignored Midaria and changed to Akari who jolted from fear. His eyes met Alexander's eyes but he couldn't keep the eye contact for long. Now, Mr. Dotakari, we don't want you to lie or change the subject, why did you push me off of the stairs? Asked Alexander again. Akari shivered and lowered his head we were instructed to cause you to get fired from the training camp he said with a low voice causing Alexander to slap on his lowered neck. Speak louder you dumb fish. We were instructed to cause you to get fired from the training camp. Akari cried out, each hit from Alexander or his men felt like a rock. He didn't want to feel any more pain so he confessed. By who? Asked Alexander causing Akari to shiver at that. He didn't answer for some time which caused Alexander to repeat himself by who? Akari was trembling, he was hesitant between fearing Alexander or to Agata. One is holding his life right now while the other is far away but still can reach any time. Mayuri, Jintaro. Akari said slowly. Midoriya who heard him felt relieved that his friend didn't say anything reckless. Alexander narrowed his eyes before looking at Midoriya what he said, is it true? Midoriya closed his eyes and nodded. Alexander sighed lock them tightly. He ordered. Immediately, four men. Each two locked one boy. Oh, oi. What are you doing? I told you what you want to know. What are you gonna do? Akari shouted. Midoriya couldn't even feel his mouth to even shout. You lied. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt that you two were just mindless subordinates, but it seems like you know what's going on. Alexander opened his pocket knife and took Akari's hand and separated his index you chose to follow your leader who to you seems way scarier than me. Alexander grinned while the boy's heart targana burst out of their chests t, their chests are rising up and down quickly as they saw what Alexander cut Akari's finger causing blood to gush out. Akari screamed from pain as he saw his finger in Alexander's hand. He kicked around to free himself but with two red blinders holding him had nowhere to run to. Midaria struggled too but he received the same fate. Alexander cut his finger causing him to shout and scream on top of his lung like a pig, even Alexander had to cover his ears and kick his jaw to break it for him so he won't keep screaming. But, Midaria passed out due to damaging his brain from that kick and Alexander couldn't care less. Akari saw his friend's jaw twist in a painful way and pass out, he forgot his pain momentarily as he looked at Alexander who seemed to him like a demon. All you need to say is who gives the big orders. Did you push me off because the ninth seat order it, or his brother, or that Jintaro boy? Alexander asked Akari whose eyes were shaking from the way Alexander spoke to him. He didn't speak for some time which annoyed Alexander and caused him to cut Akari's thumb this time. Akari howled from pain I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Just don't hurt me anymore, please, Akari shouted as he cried out with tears and snot mixed. Good. Alexander grinned from ear to ear be a good boy and tell me what you know, then I promise that the two of you will leave here alive. Plus. 
The next day, at the North Star Dorm, the morning sun rose upon the North Star's dormitory as its residents woke with vigor and great energy so they can face another day in the great cooking school that called Totsuki. Natasha asked, please pass me the salt bottle, Kiyama asked from Natasha who was eating her egg to pass him the salt. Natasha did it unconsciously. Breakfast was peaceful and quiet as the most troublesome people either were still sleeping or out. It was only Yama, Ryo, Isami, and Natasha who were eating breakfast as Takumi is still sleeping, Alice too is still in her room while Alexander is still out for his business. After a few minutes, Takumi came down with his pajamas and his hair messy. He had just woken up good morning. He said as he descended from the stairs and washed his face, he then joined his friends for breakfast. Alice woke up too and headed down she was humming a song. She was in her school uniform good morning everybody today she was overly excited and that didn't go unnoticed by the others. But they smiled when they saw her face, it was shining brightly as she came down the stairs. Good morning, honey. Natasha squeezed Alice's cheek as she handed her her share of today's breakfast. It was made by Isami himself. Good morning, said Yama. He was messing with food as he started adding some spices. Good morning, said Ryo, he just ate peacefully not minding anyone. Good morning, Nakiriz, said Isami as he took the bottles of spices from Hyama's hand to stop him from messing with his dish. Goody morning, Takumi's eyes are still sleepy, his hands are frozen with a toast in them, he was trying to add some butter to it but he was too sleepy, and his messy hair looks cute too. His fang earls would die for one picture of it. Is Alexander here yet? Alice asked Natasha as she ate her breakfast. No, he is still out, Natasha answered simply. Alice pouted her cheek and said with a small amount of anger good lord, and here I was excited about our first day as a boyfriend and girlfriend. That Alexander. Everyone who was listening went on with their stuff and breakfast not realizing her words, but slowly, all kind of sounds in the room died down as all heads turned to Alice who was eating a piece of bacon with a frown. Boyfriend. Girlfriend. Alice? Alexander? I'm still dreaming. Everyone thought the same as they looked at Alice with horror. Never in their wildest dreams would they've imagined that this kind of new would be dropped in this kind of way. Chapter 36, Totsuki is still a school in the end. It's been two days since Alexander and Alice started dating. Alexander hasn't come back from dealing with the two boys, well, he has already dealt with them, he is just keeping them for some minor enjoyment for him and his men. Having a bunch of mob in one place with nothing to do makes them bored so the bunch got the two boys to play with, not in a sexual way or anything but only making the boys suffer under the impression that if they completed a set of missions they will be free to go. While Alexander is enjoying the fun, on the other side of Totsuki, a wildfire of news has spread across Totsuki school. A piece of news that shocked many and excited a few. Nakari Alice was reported dating her fellow doormate Sabu Alexander. The news itself was started by Alice, she wanted them to know that she, Nakari Alice is the girlfriend of the man who will stand on top, the man is Sabu Alexander. Alice had two reasons for her actions, one letting her relation with Alexander to be known while the other is for Erina to realize that she is no coward when it comes to her feeling and that she is way ahead of her. Oi! Did you hear about Nakari Alice Sama dating the new transfer students? One man said to his group of friends. Yeah man. I can't believe it either. His friend showed him Totsuki's newspaper, it had two pictures of Alice and Alexander beside each other standing in an epic pose. Alice's picture is from when the journalist asked for a picture from her while Alexander's is from the entrance ceremony with the cherry blossom falling on his head. The school is in an uproar from this sudden news, especially Alice's fans who were weeping blood after this and cursing Alexander to death. At Arena's office, she too got hold of this news after Hisako tried to cover it up for the whole day but in the end you can't is something everyone is talking about. Her hands were trembling while holding the journal, her eyes are covered by her blonde hair. Hisako is behind her feeling the tension rising in the room. Arena put down the journal and said with a low voice so, this is your answer, Alice? Arena smiled coldly you don't seem to realize that your efforts are meaningless, it's is not who got with him first she chuckled with cold aura making Hisako behind her terrified, she has never seen her master like this. Arena Sama. Hisako was worried, she was with Arena since childhood so she knows when something is wrong with her. Outside of Totsuki, on the road from the warehouse. Alexander is in his car followed by his bodyguards. They've already finished playing with the two boys and throw them on the roadside with five messing fingers on their hands while driving home. While the cars are going on one road. Alexander recognized this area as his father's home. 
Just as the car is passing through his father's home he saw the shop open. Stop the car. He orders the driver causing the cars to stop with the screeching sound of the wheels. What is wrong sir? Asked Vados as he reached behind his back for his weapon. Relax, I just saw my father's shop open, I'm gonna pay a visit Alexander got out of the car followed by Vados and three other men in black suits. Alexander entered the shop and called hello he waited for some time before Soma got out from the kitchen sorry sorry, we are no oh, anarchy. It's been so long, when Soma saw his brother he got happy and high-fived him, Alexander returned the high-five casually and asked what are you doing here, I thought father returned from his work with my mother. I am just working on some stuff here, but my old man called and said he will be here after some days, Soma looked at Alexander's arm and was surprised oh, anarchy your arm. Is it okay now? He asked with a smile. Alexandre ruffled his red hair and said of course, it's been good for two days now. Are you going to Tosuki? I am going there now if you need a ride Alexander pointed at the other with his thumb. Now I am good, I still have some stuff to do here, maybe after a few days, Soma shrugged his shoulders. When Soma answered, Nikami and Karasi Mayumi got out of the kitchen with red faces from the food they ate previously. But when Alexander saw their expression he misunderstood it some stuff? He thought, then a light bulb shined on his head oh, I see, then be careful. Alexandra retreated after he greeted the two girls and left them to do the stuff that he completely misunderstood. Take care, son shouted at his brother who got in the car and waved at him. Alexander took off to Totsuki leaving his brother and the two girls to finish their stuff. After entering Totsuki and reaching the North Star dormitory, Alexandra ordered his men to leave. His business is already set in motion and his uncle can take care of the rest. The cars left and Alexander entered the dorm. He went to the living room and found Natasha sitting with the Chinese cuisine teacher. Oh. Here he is Natasha pointed at Alexander. Alexander come here, your teacher here was looking for you. Teacher Lee stood up and greeted Alexander good day to you, Mr. Alexander he bowed. Good day to you too, teacher Alexander returned the bow with a slight smile I wonder what has brought teacher Lee to look for me? he asked. Lee laughed and touched his beard well, to keep it short, you're about to fail. Lee dropped a bomb on Alexander and Natasha who were shocked. What? shouted Natasha, her old voice is high because that was a shock to her, never in her wildest dreams would she imagine Alexander failing a cooking class. Are you sure about this, Lee? she asked. Alexander too wanted to know why is he about to fail? Lee opened his eyes and said your servant keep coming asking for permission to leave from school, meaning, until now, you haven't taken any of your tests said Lee with a serious voice causing Alexander to realize his fault. It is true, he hasn't taken any of his tests until now. Natasha shook her head after hearing the reason for you, I thought it was something else. She looked at Alexander and said if you failed because of this then you have no one to blame besides yourself she then left to prepare tea for teacher Lee and Alexander. Alexander returned his attention to Lee who had already sat down on the couch. Then what can we do about this, teacher Lee? asked Alexander. Lee smiled and said easy, you just need to take all of your tests in the next two days and you need to pass more than 70 c slash o of the more. Lee stopped at this making Alexander curious. If someone else was in his place he wouldn't be curious but terrified. But Alexander has no reason to feel terrified. Or, what? he said. Lee's smile grows wider or, you will lose your right to participate in this year's autumn selection. Lee took out an envelope with Alexander's name on it. Lee chuckled at this. The Elite Ten has chosen this year's participant and was chosen of course. But due to him being absent for the most part, a notice was necessary for him and if he failed to pass more than 70 c slash o of his testes in the next two days, his right will be revoked and someone else will be chosen in his place. By the way, how many tests are there? Alexander asked the question that was bothering him the most. Lee stood up and laughed ha ha ha. 50 tests. He then left the dorm with Alexander's jaw on the floor. No one told him to keep avoiding his lessons. The times he was in the class or any class can be counted on one hand. Stupid. Now he either cook 50 meals in the next two days in the middle of this heavy schedule or gets kicked out of Totsuki. Chapter 37, Etsuya Rizen. This chapter still needs to be edited. After two days of Alexander looking around the school for a teacher who can find free his schedule for a few hours so he can take his tests. Unfortunately, so many teachers were busy all day long with the preparation for the autumn elections. Alexander was basically begging one teacher to do him a favor but even then he couldn't. 
Alice who was hanging around with him in his quest of finding a teacher, she never realized why he was doing that but just tagged along. When she realized his situation, all she did was just pull her phone and make a single phone call and one teacher appeared to hold Alexander's tests but on the condition, he has to cook all the fifty dishes in a span of four hours. When that happened, Alexander slapped himself for not realizing that his girlfriend is the granddaughter of the head of this school. The tests weren't that hard, all but just simple dishes that Alexander cooked them all in three hours in a large kitchen together at the same time. The teacher who witnessed this trembled from disbelieving as he saw Alexander running around the kitchen every few minutes he would present him with a dish that can put all students to shame. Alexander passed the test with flying colors. Alice gave him a towel to wipe his sweat from all that running. Good work, honey Alice was enjoying spending some time with her boyfriend as this is their second day as a girlfriend and boyfriend. Some Totsuki magazine's journalists were spying on the both of them and took a picture of Alice handing Alexander the towel. This was their next title for the newest version the white princesses caring for her black prince. Many people were interested in Alice and Alexander's relationship and the Totsuki magazines are willing to milk this topic to the last drop. Let's go, Alice Alexander wiped his sweat and took Alice's hand exiting the kitchen leaving only the teacher to finish the paperwork for his tests. Alice and Alexander left the classes area and headed to the North Star dormitory in Alice's car. Now your participation in the autumn election is guaranteed Alice said to Alexander who was holding her in his arms while she snuggled in his embrace. Yeah, I almost played myself Alexander said with a sarcastic voice as he laughed it off. Say, honey. Alice looked at Alexander with a teasing smile if we faced each other in the election, will you go easy on me? She asked, Alice was just playing around, she didn't mean to ask for a free pass from him, it's too embarrassing to do that. Of course not. Alexandra ruffled her hair and continued if we met, I will make sure to destroy you, he said with a deep voice. Scary Alice shouted playfully before she responded to with then I will make sure I do the same to you too, she said. Alexander smiled and kissed her softly which surprised Alice, she wasn't ready for it. Then, make sure to give it your all cause it won't be that easy, Alexander said to Alice was touching her lips with her fingers, her face was red from Alexander's antics before she hit him softly on the chest. Not fair, not fair, you cheated. She was supposed to be the playful one in their relationship so the surprise attacks from Alexander are her weak point. The both of them kept on teasing each other from time to time while the car drove to the dorm. When the car stopped in front of the dorm's gate, Alexander and Alice got out of the car and entered the dorm where they found Hyama and Ryo in the kitchen making lunch for them all. Takumi and Daisami are reading Totsuki's magazine while having a blast of laughter. PFFT Look at this, ha ha ha. Takumi showed Isami the picture of Alexander and Alice with that exaggerated title. Isami smiled but didn't laugh out loud as he saw Alexander and Alice passing behind them. They're idiots. Prince and princess. Ha ha ha. Alice leaned from behind him what is so funny? She asked causing Takumi to freak out. W-H-A. He fell on his butt Alice. Alexander. Since when? He asked. Alexander gave Takumi a cold glare for a moment before he decided to ignore him. Do you find it funny huh? Alice started the poor Takumi as she took the magazine and flipped the pages before she showed him a page about him winning a shock Hoji the other day, then what is wrong with this pose? Do you do it always? Is it like a habit? Alice was teasing the red-faced Takumi who was cringing at himself while Isami is now free to laugh at his brother who was being uncool right now. Did you perhaps want to look dashing, eh? Perhaps you thought this was cool? Alice covered her mouth and looked at Takumi with petty in her eyes. Mind your own business, Alice, he shouted. You started this, Alice retorted. While two of them are arguing, Alexander is in the kitchen with Yama and Ryu. Just what are they being noisy for? Yama closed a pan to heat up. Who knows, Ryu was still working on his dish but most importantly, Alexander, what happened with your tests? Are they done comma dot 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 and stop eating the prepared food, said Ryu. Alexander looked back at the both of them with his mouth stuffed with French fries eh? Ah. Yeah, I'm done with them, everything is okay, he said after taking a bunch of French fries in his mouth. Honestly, I can't believe that you were about to get expelled because of this. Even if you have a business outside of Totsuki, at least take the exams in time. That shouldn't be a hard one, said Hyama. When he heard about Alexander's situation, nothing could express how dumbfounded he was. Man I was really in a pinch you know. Everyone was so busy and they kicked me out saying I should have taken the exams earlier. 
Alexander put his hand on Yo's shoulder who waited with Yama for the dishes to finish heating up. He and Yama were listening to Alexander's story with funny faces. After some time, Natasha came to the dorm. She entered and saw Takumi and Alice fighting. She could only sigh at these two's antics. She rubbed her head and called Alexander. You got mail, she said. She found the mail in the mailbox when she was coming back. Yeah Alexander ran to her and took the mail. He read it with a casual face but it didn't last long as the sender is no one other than Etsuya Izan himself. It didn't do anything but he requests a meeting with me? I wonder if he got the news about his two little birds? He thought. He ripped the paper and threw in the trash can. No one paid any attention to his expression or what he did. They were busy with their own thing. Izan requests meeting Alexander tomorrow noon. It was a good opportunity for Alexander to see the man who thought he could just get rid of him easily. Let me test your metal, he thought. Alexander grinned as he can't wait for tomorrow so he can see this person and decide if he should live or die. Alexander and Co. ate the food after Natasha came back. Natasha, Kiyama, Isami, Takumi, and Ryu. The poor ones, they had to witness the new lovebirds feed each other in front of them. The thing they all share is that all of them are single and they couldn't help but feel they were being bullied at the moment. Chapter 38, You Don't Know Who I Am? The next day, Alexander took off with his motorcycle to meet with the ninth seat of Totsuki and the man who was behind his troubles at the training camp. He is excited, he is hoping that this guy is someone who can give him a challenge. Once Alexander reached the place mentioned in the letter from yesterday, he parked his bike and headed to the front door, there he saw two guys sitting. Is this where Izan is? he asked. The two boys look like your everyday mob boys. They eyed Alexander with sharp eyes and a mocking look like Bray but once he returned their glare with a bite of pressure they lowered their eyes in fear and sweat on their forehead. People who fight on the street have a sense when offending someone can end you. Yeah, one of them stood up and opened the door go to the third floor, you must be Sabu Alexander, he is waiting for you. Alexander passed by them and entered the building, it was a simple building with three floors. On his way to the third floor, Alexander met with people running with documents and files in their hands. It's like a mini version of one of his company's situations that he witnesses every time he is in one. After walking through the corridors of the building, Alexander reached the top floor where Izan is. He knocked on the door three times but didn't wait for permission to enter and just barged in. Excuse me, he said. Izan who was looking at some sal statistics, he looked at Alexander with the corner of his eyes. You're a bold one aren't ya? Izan smirked at Alexander if this was someone else I would have kicked them off this school already he said. Alexander didn't answer and sat on the chair in front of his desk. And what prevents you from doing so? he asked. Izan put his papers down and adjusted his glasses because I'm interested in you he said. Alexander rolled his eyes yeah, I hear that a lot lately. Izan chuckled I did a bit of research on you. From the first day in here you claim to be the best, the second thing you did is solving a huge problem for your newly opened restaurant and destroying the cause of the problem in three days Izan's eyes never left Alexander's face as he wanted to see the shock on it but it never happens, Alexander just listened with his head popping back and forth. Six and avoided getting expelled, got your arm broken but still managed to cook 201 meals and finished second in your group. Izan said with a slight smile, all of what's said will make anyone feel amazed, especially at the alumni part. Just get to the point, I don't have Alzheimer so you can remind me of what I did. Alexander put his legs on the mini table in front of him. He did come here so he can hear someone telling him what he did. Join me, let's corporate, me and you together, Izan said with a confident expression making Alexander frown you have a large company and I have a vast network of connections. X can profit from each other. Izan was confident in himself, his reputation as the alchemist too is large and known across Japan and even beyond, he manages a lot of business at once and all that at the age of 17 years old, people are confident that by the time he graduates from Tatsuki he will be an unrivaled man through the cooking business world. And what about your previous boy, or what was his name again? Miyamura or Miyamuri? I don't remember but I can remember that you and he had a business relationship, said Alexander, his eyes looked deep into Izan's. Mayuri. He wasn't good enough, said Izan, not bothered by Alexander's question he didn't have any sense for business and heavily relied on me, at the first sign of problems he returned to me thus causing his downfall at your hand Izan took out document from under his desk and passed it to Alexander this will be our business contract if you accept, I made sure to include all details about the profit that the both of us will receive. In Izan's mind, Alexander was going to accept eventually, 
His contract is the best that he can get his hands on and he can give him a major help since the Red Cloud restaurant chain is not that famous in Japan. Alexander looked through the document I have to admit, I saw many contracts in the past with many promotion agencies but this one is the best so far. Of course, thought Dizen. But, you know that the Red Cloud is one of the biggest restaurants out there, with my mother Alexandra Helmet being the head chef, and just with her reputation alone I can become the best restaurant owner in Japan without your help said Alexander as he pushed the document back at Izen. Izen looked at his contract and he got a little bit angry but he calmed himself that is right, you can do that but. He smiled you never used your mother's reputation until now, that means you want to prove yourself, with my help, you can do so with ease. Alexander looked at Izin as if he was retarded, prove myself? Me? To whom? Anyway, I won't join you in any way, you and I are enemies after all. Izin was shocked. What do you mean? Alexander looked at him like he a fool you boys caused me trouble in the training camp and now you want me to join you? You must be taking me for an idiot he said, he cleaned his ear and continued I'm currently dealing with your big brother, he indirectly caused me harm, and he is sticking his nose in my business, and after that, I will see if should send you after him or not. He stood up to leave. When Izan heard Alexander's words, he was shocked beyond anything. My big brother, Mafia, one thought came to him in an instant. You. Izan stood up sharply and shouted at Alexander who stopped in his track and looked back at Izan you're a Mafia member? He questioned. Alexander smiled you're not aware of this? He questioned. Impossible. The Red Cloud is a restaurant business lead by Alexandra Helmet, it is no relation to any mafia business. Don't try to fool me, Izan shouted, he may be kind of though but one thing Izan hates more than his brother is, mafia, he absolutely detests all mafia around the world, he sees it as the absolute corruption of this world. Of course it is, but my group is called the Red Blinders, and I'm the leader of that group. Alexander chuckled he turned to leave the office make sure you don't follow your brother's steps or you will soon join him. He said, he closed the door gently behind him. Izan was still in shock and his eyes trembled. He clenched his teeth and screamed and flipped the heavy desk. Everywhere I go I am always surrounded by gangs and mafia. Izan shouted as hard as he can, his veins are popping up, his hair became messy. He put his hands on his head and sat down when will I escape from them, from him, from everything. He said, his voice was low and had an unimaginable amount of desperation to escape from his parents' life and from his brother's life but that dreams seem far away to obtain. While this was happening, in another place in Tokyo, the Mayuri household's manor. Nine black cars stopped in front of the large mansion. The car in the middle opened revealing a tall man with a strong and physically fit body in an Armani black suit. His hair was black and made in a spiky style with an undercut. His eyes are golden. This man is no other than Alfie Helmet, Alexander's uncle and the previous leader of the Red Blinders. Is this the place? he asked. Vlad who come out of the car too answered, yes, it is. He adjusted his glasses and said, should we break in or knock on the door? Alfie laughed it off and said, of course we should knock on the door dear Vlad, we are here with a gift after all. Vlad bowed and snapped his fingers. Forty-three men came out of their cars and in front of them was a bloody boy with his face blue from how hard he was beaten. His uniform is a well-known one, it was Totsuki's uniform. The boy's eyes were dead, he didn't get any sleep for days. This is Mayuri Jintaro. All he can remember is that he was working on bringing back his dead restaurant to life before Alfie and his man took him and beat him to this state. He screamed and begged for his life but nothing worked. All he could do is feel the pain and hope he dies soon, but it seems they weren't planning on killing him. Alfie leads the men with Jintaro between them and knocked on the front door. After a few moments a maid opened the door. When she saw the handsome man in front of her she was taken back a little before she noticed her bloody young master behind him. She screamed on top of her lungs causing the other servant to show up and the security guards. A few of Alfie's men took the guards out easily as they knocked them out. Alfie entered the mansion please excuse my rudeness, he said, followed by Vlad and his men. What is going on here? Mayuri's further came down the stairs with his two other sons. Oh. It is just us, Mr. Mayuri, we've come in peace. Alfie raised his arm. Tanaka, Jintaro's further saw his son dragged by a man in a sorry state. His heart ached at the sight of his beaten son who are you? And what did you to my son? What do you want? He shouted. He reached Alfie and faced him. His two sons were afraid so they stayed on the stairs. I've come to return your son, don't worry he is still alive. But I hope you don't mind us taking freedom in scolding your son in your place said Alfie. What? 
Tanaka was furious, Alfie just admitted that he was the one who did this to his son if you think you'll get away by this you're very mistaken, he said. I am not planning on getting away by this, in fact, I encourage to call the cops now, it's been such a long time since we fought with any other power, it is getting boring here. Alfie caught Jintaro by his hair and said I am here for us because of this, your son has two days to get out of this country or the next time we will visit I will put a bullet in his head. His golden eyes are cold and unforgiving. A bullet? Tanaka thought, there is no way anyone in Japan is allowed to have a gun, and it is very hard to import guns from outside of Japan, even the strongest gangs in Japan deal with knives and other weapons. It is rare to find someone with a gun in Japan other than the police and the otherized officers. Your son dared to plot against my sweet nephew and I didn't like that even one bit. Alfie brought out a gun from behind him and aimed at Jintaro's leg this is my warning, the next time it's on the head. With a loud bang. Jintaro woke up from his daze by a heavy assault of pain in his leg, he kicked around and screamed from pain, his eyes are crying streams of tears, his father, brothers, and servants are looking at him with horror. Alfie let go of him and brought his gun to his place I hope I'm making myself clear. Alfie looked at Vlad and signaled for him to move, the latter brought a blue document from his suitcase and threw it to Tanaka who was trying to help his son, he was applying pressure on his wound and called for a servant who can do the first aid before he can call an ambulance. Tanaka looked at the document then Alfie. Read it before you decide to come after us. Alfie left him with these words and turned to leave let's go, boys, we still got the Tetsuya boy to deal with. The red blinders left the Mayuri Manor and Tanaka finally called for an ambulance. He picked the blue document and skimmed through it. His heart fell down and felt his feet go cold I thought disposed of these. The document contains all the shady things he did to raise up his fortune, all the blackmailing, murder, bribery and all sort of things he did in the past. He had made sure to dispose of all the evidence but it seems all that was for nothing as the red blinders brought it out to light. Their warning was clear, try anything funny and we will bring you down. If this information got out, his life would be spent in jail and his family will go out to beg for money on the street. Tanaka looked at his bleeding son and thought what mess did he bring upon the family. LL Tanaka could do is send his son away for the time being while he works the things between the red blinders and his family, the things in this document must not be spread around. Chapter 39, Infighting. After Alexander's confrontation with his own, he headed to take some classes for once since he came back. Alexander is free for the time being, the company and the group are in Alfie's hands so he can relax for the time being. His meeting with the Romano family head that was postponed is tomorrow so there is no pressure on him now. He can be a normal student for the time being. On his way, he met with his brother Soma. Yo, Soma, where are you heading to? He asked. Soma greeted his brother and responded with to the dinner arrangement class he said, Soma eyed Alexander's bike with sparkling eyes. You like it? He asked. Soma nodded enthusiastically. This bike is the most popular bike in the market now and with the distance he needs to cross every day from the dorm to the school is very long so a transportation method is required. Hop in. I can get you one later, he said. The real. Soma jumped behind his brother and both of them headed straight to the classes. Soma was excited as he smiled from ear to ear. He knows his brother is rich and he is not ashamed to get a bike for free from him. When they reached the school, both of them were separated to attend their own class. When Alexander entered his class he found Yama, Ryo, and Takumi also there. Takumi waved at him to sit with them. Their teacher this time is a Japanese teacher whose class was about the proper manners in presenting a new dish and how you can make one. Alexander slept the class away, he was surrounded by Hyama, Takumi, and Ria who covered up for him for a while but even they can't conceal a whole body sleeping in the class. The teacher didn't bother scolding Alexander, in his opinion, high school students are mature enough to know the consequences behind their actions, especially Totsuki's students. After the class ended, the group left the class with Alexander stretching his arms. You really can sleep, huh? Kiyama looked at Alexander who was yawning. Yeah, I hear that a lot, said Alexander. The group made its way to the school's arena, apparently, Alice is having a shock her he with some research club. The arena was packed full with students shouting Alice's name. The four boys watched the battle with disinterest as they know that Alice will win. And so she did, she won and crushed her opponent completely. The surrounding students felt awe and fear at the same time. She was a skilled chef to admire but a terrifying opponent to face. Alice waved at her fans with a bright smile, once she saw Alexander and the others, she stormed to them with lightning speed. What do you think? Alice asked with a smug face, she raised her chest up with pride. 
Alexandre ruffled her hair not bad he said. The others were still thinking about the tools she used to win. Alice is a chef that uses science and technology to her advantage in cooking, and with her being a skilled chef equipped with these tools she is a force to reckon with. But their pride won't allow them to lose to technology as chef so. Humphrey. You're happy to defeat a weakling? Kiyama closed his eyes and made fun of Alice's behavior. That guy wasn't that strong, to begin with, said Takumi you should face against someone stronger he continued. Alice looked at them with a funny look stronger. By strong. Do you mean Alexander or an elite ten? She tilted her head in a clueless manner. Wait, were you geese talking about yourselves? Alice put her hand on her mouth as she burst out laughing you actually consider yourself strong. She was having a blast right now, she couldn't even support herself when laughing so Alexander had to hold her tight. The surrounding students heard their conversation held their breath as they felt the tense atmosphere, they know that a battle is going to take place between the North Star's residents. Then why don't we check that out? said Takumi with intense competitiveness. Why not? Are you in? The three of you Alice pointed at you, Kiyama, and Takumi. The three men looked into each other and nodded. So be it, they said. Alexander was looking at the bunch of them with a stupefied expression, did they just forgot I exist? He thought. Oi guys, calm down, there is no need to fight he said, he tried to calm the situation but all he made them do is. Alexander is on my team, said Alice as she hugged his arm. The guy's eyes were sparkling like thunder. Kiyama a grin followed by Takumi sure they said. Yo was silent the whole time but he agrees with Yama and Takumi. He sure got more wins than Alice but only in his specialty field. Once he steps out of his domain he is an easy prey to her. Guys Alexander tried to calm things again but all he did was fuel their competitive souls. Are you in or not? Asked you. He eyed Alexander with a challenging look. Alexander was silent for a moment. He looked between Alice and the guys. All of this started with a simple comment and a provoking question from Alice. He rubbed his forehead and sighed all right, but the match will be delayed for some time. Also, said Alexander if we won, no more infighting he said. Takumi smiled and said let it be, I do not mind such conditions, he said. Kiyama and you have no reason reject too. Then it is set on stone. You better get prepared said Alexander as he looked around, the students were surrounding them and looking at them with a nervous expression. They didn't realize this but these guys were releasing a powerful and chilling aura scaring the students. But let's get out of here first, he said as he dragged Alice out with the others behind them. The day went completely normal, even though they just challenged each other to a shock early they didn't let that affect them. Alice, later on, went with Alexander on a date outside of Totsuki. The both of them got to enjoy some fun time together alone. When they got back. Alexander didn't forget his brother and sent him a brand new motorcycle, Soma and his friends were happy about it as they took turns in riding it across their territory. While in the North Star territory, Alice insisted to share the bed with Alexander. He refused the idea many times but she got what she wanted in the end and they slept in the same bed. It took Alexander all his self-control not to do some groping and massaging to Alice's body, much to her disappointment. The next day, Alexander left earlier in the morning for two reasons. One was to run away before he does something he may regret to his sweet girlfriend while the other is. A meeting with the Romano family head. It is not good to keep postponing the meeting day all the time. Vlad who came back to continue his duties as Alexander's assistant said to Alexander who changed from his uniform to a black Armani suit and leather shoes. Yeah. Let's just hope that he won't bring the marriage thing now said Alexander I just got a girlfriend, imagine what she will do when she hears that I am getting in an arranged marriage while dating her. The cars took off to Mount Fuji. The Romano family head has paid a huge amount of money to get a piece of land there to build his home. The trip is long but if Alexander could get the Romano family to his side, then everything will be great regardless of anything that may happen in the future. The Helmet family will grow in power and influence again and reach a new level. Chapter 40, Romano The roads to Mount Fuji is long and foggy at this early in the morning. Alexander is looking through the window admiring, nothing? It's all just road and greenery, it's making him get bored and from time to time he would leak a big sigh getting Vlad's attention. We're about to reach the Romana house, it's just 15 more minutes. He pushed his glasses up and took out his laptop in that time, why don't you look through this? Alexander looked at the laptop and skimmed through what is on display is this the Etsuya Boy Company's business activity? He asked. Yes, his business is heavily relied on Likaya, importing drugs blackmail and managing multiple brothels at once, 
He also has a bunch of boys inside his territory going around asking for protection money, said Vados, his tone carries a huge amount of mockery. What he said is one of the low mob boss's activity, it just showed Vlad how much of small ante they are going to kill the following days. Alexander looked at the documents carefully and he went into his deep thoughts mode and Vlad gave him complete silence so he won't disturb him. No sooner, the cars reached a huge gate in front of the road. Four guards with guns walked to the first car they asked a few questions and let them pass, they removed the obstacles and the parade of black cars entered the territory of the man who was once called there, the clean criminal, due to his business being in the underworld but no one can point where he is involved, no one, not even the cops. The cars soon entered a new territory and Alexander started hearing savage sounds and screams, he snapped from his thought and he looked outside of the window of his car. What he saw shocked him. A zoo. He thought, on the muddy road, several fake habitats for the animals are placed on the two sides of the road. Buffaloes, lions, zebras, giraffes, wolves, and even chickens, etc. All kind of animals are in this place. Alexander could only marvel at this. Why there is a zoo in Mount Fuji? he asked. Who knows, I didn't know about this either, answered Vlad, he too was amazed by this sight. A lot of money must have been wasted on these and even more, money to take care of them daily. Stop the car, ordered Alexander, Vlad repeated his order and the driver honked and all the cars stopped in their track. Let's walk. Alexander got out of the car and Vlad followed him with ten other men. Alexander walked by the cage's side, he touched the animals and fed them and all the other stuff. He took the chance to take a look at all the animals and pet them, well those he can pet. A lion won't just sit there letting you touch him without you leaving your arm behind. Alexander kept on walking for one hour until he reached the house gates, surprisingly, the house isn't that big, it can be described as a small villa. The servants greeted Alexander saying they were expecting him. He and Vlad were led inside the villa while his men stayed out, the Romano family is not hostile and Alexander is confident that nothing bad will happen. Alexander and Vlad knocked on a door, and as his habit, he never waited for permission and just entered finding a middle-aged man sitting on a large dark brown desk smoking cigarette. His hair is red like blood and his eyes are green like leaves, he is wearing a pajama, his whole aura scream against the norm. Excuse me. You're already in, said the middle-aged man. Alexander sat in front of the old man with Vlad behind him. How are you doing? Mr. Roberto Romano Alexander asked. Good. Would you like some tea or milk, or cereal? He asked which caused Alexander to chuckle. A cup of milk, that would be great, he said. The red-headed Roberto picked his phone and called bring me a cup of tea and milk here for me and my guest here. After a period of silence, Alexander asked, so, why does Mr. Dot Roberto want from me? Roberto looked at Alexander for a moment before he went back to looking through some documents which annoyed Alexander. Both of us know that you're not doing anything. So if you please, I'm a busy man, said, Alexander. Yes, I know, but I'm waiting for my tea. Alexander frowned, he sighed and moved to find a comfortable spot on his chair and waited for the damn tea to arrive. After thirty minutes, a maid came in and handed Roberto a cup of tea and left, she didn't bring any milk for Alexander. Of course, Alexander know that all of this was international but he isn't some low mob who gets angry over this. Thirty minutes to make a cup of tea, you have great servants. Normal people take 10 minutes at max but 30 minutes is so fast, I don't know how they managed to make one single cup of tea in that short time Alexander mocked the earlier display clearly which made Roberto chuckle. Isn't it? He said I pay them huge amount money for this. Do you want to finish your tea or do we speak? Said Alexander as he pointed at the cup because if you want to make me angry or something like that, then just give. I'm not trying to get you angry Mr. Sabu Alexander, wait. Wasn't it Alexander Helmet? Which one do you prefer? Alexander sighed since I am not wearing my school uniform then, Helmet, if you want to he answered. Then, Helmet, what I called you here for is, Roberto decided to quit playing around with the boy and not step out of his boundaries, after all, Alexander is the leader of the Red Blind as I want to join our families, he said. And why do you want to do that? asked Alexander. Roberto smiled I am getting old and I am no more interested in working in the dark and, I'm exhausted his eyes dimmed a little at that. In the past 19 years here, in Japan, I enjoyed my life to the fullest, with my wife and daughter, but I know that the moment I step out of the game or I die, my family will pay the price, with blood Roberto looked at Alexander, he knows that Alexander understand what he means. Unlike you Mr. Helmet, I don't have any loyal followers, 
all of them are lusting after my money and others are power hungry wolves after my position, some of them are openly displaying their desires while others are in the dark. Alexander nodded, that is to be expected when you go in this line of businesses so your reason is. Yes, I want to protect my family. Roberto didn't hesitate to admit his desire. And why us? We have the same problems as any other family out there. Your family is different. You all protect each other, protect each other and mostly, you all love each other. Roberto investigated the history of the Helmet family and not once did he come across a family dispute. I want my family and yours to be linked by blood. My daughter is the most precious thing in this world to me, if she can be protected, I am willing to sell my soul to the devil. Alexander closed his eyes and sighed, this is getting in the wrong direction he wants. And what if I refuse? He asked, Alexander isn't going to accept it just because he was asked to, joining the families is a good thing and it can boost their power greatly but it is not necessary. Roberto blinked for a moment then, there is nothing I can do, I won't press the matter any further. He sighed and leans on his chair. Okay, I am going to accept your deal then. Roberto heard this and he almost jumped from his chair but he calmed down all of your businesses must be handed to me and a few of your higher ups must die in the process, your force will be reformed and will be dispatched to various branches of our family, and you won't own anything anymore. Roberto almost puked blood. Nothing? Young boy, nothing is a bit. Too cruel. Roberto faked laughed and sweat fell on his forehead even if I was desperate to protect my family you're asking too much. Vlad who was behind Alexander spoke this time instead of Alexander it is not too much, Lord Roberto. Roberto looked at Vlad for a moment. Joining two families is not as in the past where the two families marry and support each other, it is not the same as today and certainly not the same for our family. What do you mean? Alexander raised his hand, he wanted to say it himself you will be one of us, you won't be Roberto Romano anymore. But Roberto Helmet from the day we join each other, and as the head of the family, I naturally own everything you own. Alexander crossed his legs and with prideful eyes, he waited for Roberto's respond. Roberto looked at Alexander and he was taken back when he found himself drawn to him. The way he presented his point of view was overwhelming that even an old and experienced man like him couldn't pull off. I understand Roberto stood up for his new boss and bowed to him. This scene here is the simplicity of the two bosses agreeing on one thing, that one of them is higher than the other. Now, you said, we join each other by blood, do you mean that you want to marry your daughter to me? Alexander asked Roberto who straightened his back and sat back on his desk. Yes, said Roberto. Does she agree? Roberto looked up at the ceiling before he sighed she didn't accept but neither refused he said, she insisted that she will say her opinion about this until she meets you. Well, I don't see any reason to refuse meeting her, if she is going to be a wife of mine, then it is only reasonable that we meet first so we can know each other, said Alexander, he pushed his hair back and he took Roberto's cup of tea to drink it. Who is she by the way? This is the first time Alexander questioned about her since the beginning. She goes to Totsuki, you maybe know her, her name is Rindo Romano or, as she goes with now, Kobayashi Rindo, the elite tens second seat. Alexander chucked on his tea and spat it out on the floor. What? he asked. Chapter 41, A Dinner at Shinomiya. Other people's kids are the worst. They have no fear. Mostly because Big Brother will come and save the day. A man can't simply write in peace. We can arrange a dinner for the two of you, said Roberto. Alexander was wiping his mouth from the spilled tea. That would be great, said Alexander. Roberto took his phone to call his daughter. Alexander realized it and he added. Before you call her, you should call your lawyer first. I need you to transfer all of your business under me and change your family name his eyes are screaming of seriousness. It is his policy to take care of the important things first and fast you can do that, right? Roberto nodded with the same expression yes, I will do that now and so, Roberto called his lawyer and spoke with him. While Alexander was thinking about Rindo. I can't believe that I will be having my girlfriend and fiancé so close to each other. If things go south I may lose Alice and my relationship with my fiancé will not be that good. If they were in different places that would make it easier, they won't meet each other and have time to adjust to the news and all. I am in trouble, Alice will throw a tantrum about us being a new couple and that I still can't have another girl in the current time. Alexander rubbed his forehead from the headache, Vlad behind him understands what his master is going through. And, everything is good, said Roberto. He put his phone down and looked at the frowning Alexander is everything okay for you? He asked. Yeah, everything is, fine Alexander stood up and adjusted his black tie and tidied his black Armani suit for the dinner. 
Alexander brought out an address card give her this address, it's an acquaintance's restaurant. It's a good one, I will be there at 10 p.m. today. Roberto took the card and glanced at it for a moment before he put it down on his desk I will make sure she is there in time Roberto was sure that if he let his daughter on her own she may not even remember going, so he promised himself to drop her there himself. Great. Alexander with Vlad left the villa. At where the cars are waiting, Alexander saw someone unexpected there. Uncle? Alfie was leaning on Alexander's car playing with his phone, once he saw Alexander he smiled in a goofy way and called. Alexi. He dashed and wrapped Alexander in a crushing hug. Oi, hey, easy uncle, you eat with not crush me Alexander managed to release himself from his uncle's steel body. Sorry, sorry, ha ha ha. I just messed you Alfie patted Alexander's back with a big grin on his face. Alexander rolled his eyes it's not a big deal. It is not my first time meeting a gang leader face to face Alexander was certain that his uncle was worried, judging by the armed men behind him, he sure was ready to bust in at any given moment. Yeah, it is not your first. Alfie's smile turned in a frown but the last time that happened, you ended up with two bullets in your body Alfie pointed at the two places where Alexander was shot if it wasn't for your Dr. Schwan Murphy, you would have been dead right now. Alfie was not playing around this time, he was really worried, he may be a playful and a responsible man sometimes, but he never plays around with his family's life. Okay, but everything is okay now, I got us a new family member and new businesses fields, and all them are legal Alexander informed his uncle about what he talked about Roberto inside. Alfie was pretty amazed to hear that. He thought that Roberto is a smart man, he made the right decision, even if his business is legal and there is no dirt on his, once he steps out of the game his enemies will take the chance and even his subordinates will do and try to end his family since all his business and all his money will be a rightful inheritance to his wife and daughter and if they weren't killed then a far cruel and miserable future awaits them. Well, let's discuss this later in details but for now, I have work for you to do said Alexander. He and Alfie got in the car as they took off. Roberto who was looking through the window was on his phone. Rindo my dear, you know I don't want to force you to do anything. Yes, you're right, but this is for you. Roberto was talking with his daughter, he is trying to convince her to meet Alexander. Just meet him first, he is not an old man, yes, he is around your age, I will never lie to you, yes, if you met him and you didn't like him I can talk to him about it. Roberto smiled and felt relieved, the hard part was getting her to meet him, who knows, maybe even Alexander won't like her. Thank you babe, love you too he cut the call and throw his phone back, he looked at the line of black cars leaving his villa. Roberto believes that his move is a risky one but it's worth. Inside his car. Alexander was speaking with his uncle about his plan about the Romano family's business. So, basically you want me to kill all of the Romano's officers and in the next two weeks? Asked Alfie. Yes. Then, can I take Kinu with me? No, Kinu is on a secret mission and he will return to my side because I need him to assassinate someone for me said Alexander. Alfie thought for a moment before he sighed and gave up all right, you're the boss. Vlad who was driving this time looked in the mirror and asked Alexander Sama. Is there a place you need to go to? Yes, go to 30 Street, I need to see someone. As you wish. Vlad ordered the cars to follow him as they make their way to their destination. The cars reached their stop and parked in a long line of black cars in front of a particular restaurant, men got out and secured the street for Alexander and Alfie to get out. Vlad led the two men inside the restaurant. It was full of customers who looked at them with curiosity and wariness. Alexander stopped in front of the counter and the girl there asked have you gotten any reservation? Sir she asked. No, but I want to meet Shinomiya Kujiro. He said causing the girl to look at him with confusion and petty. She knows that not anyone can meet chef. Shinomiya. It looks like another delusional rich boy, again. Please, sir, if you don't have any reservation, I have to ask you to leave. The girl had her fair share of this kind of situation and Alexander know what she was thinking so he added. Tell him, Sabu Alexander is here. As soon as he said that, the girl's face pulled greatly like someone washed her face color with bleach. I, I I'm really sorry sir. Just a second. The girl ran back to the kitchen to inform Chef Shinomiya. After a while, Kujiro came out, as soon as he saw Alexander his face turned grim and dark. Yo, Kui. Chapter 42, Window. New Chapter Bebe. Let's get it. Oh yeah go to my Patreon. Chapter 53 is out there. Go to https colon slash slash www.patron.com slash redvoidoragon. 
or search, Dragon. What do you want at this time of the day? Shinomiya took Alexander and his uncle to his office at the back of the restaurant. Alfie was eating some sandwich made by Shinomiya, he wasn't interested in anything that the two were talking about, all he cares about is his beloved sandwich. Come and cool your friends right? Alexander started playing around as his usual can't I visit a friend without any reason? No, no, you can't Kojiru denied his claim right away, his eyebrows are twitching from time to time at Alexander's antics, he is even more annoyed by Alfie's loud munching sounds. All right, all right, I need you to host the family dinner for me, me and my fiancé will have our first meeting here, at your restaurant Alexander booed Kojiru with a bored tone, he just wanted to have fun. This is why you shouldn't be friends with business owners, they're too serious. Okay, we are still in the middle of renovations so we close at 10pm, I can arrange for that. Kojiru took out a note from his pocket and wrote down something. Great, then I will be seeing you at 10.30 Alexander prepared to leave. He wanted to hang out for a bit but he has to leave Kujiro alone. He looked at his uncle who was stuffing his mouth with his sandwich. Come on uncle, we need to go before you start an affair with that sandwich he said. Alfie looked at Alexander with a frown. But it's too good, he said, Alfie didn't want to leave before he finishes his sandwich causing Alexander to drag him by his collar. Kojiru was looking at the departing Alexander with a complicated look, his head chef, Abel Blondin came from behind him and looked where Kojiru was looking at. That's the one? he asked. Yeah, answered Kojiru, he had talked with his staff about what happened so they know what is going on. All of them were shocked at the mention that the chef they respect lost to a student and even more shocked when they heard that he is the son of the May world's godmother, Alexandra Helmet. Start preparing for the dinner, cancel any further reservation. Shinomiya ordered Abel as he entered his office back. He wants to relax and concentrate for a while. And so, the restaurant started to get empty with each passing hour. Alexander and Alfie are outside strolling in the streets, stopping at each stall because of Alfie's big stomach and his stupid amazement of new things that he never saw before. They passed the time away as the sun went down and the darkness raised up. Alexander's phone rang, he picked it up a new phone who is this? he said. You should really stop with this habit of yours. It was Alice, she spoke with a cheerful tone as she continued we talked with Natasha and the match between us and THR bunch I decided. THR? What is that? Alexander asked. Takumi, Kiyama, and you? You didn't know? Alice asked with disbelief. I didn't, but leave us from that. What about the match? Alexander avoided going down an endless path of explanation. Oh yeah, it's a spicy merluzzo dish, she said. An Italian dish, spicy, and a fish. Was this set up? This the specialty of the three of them? Alexander scratched his chin in suspicion. No it was a random dish generator online, foo fa foo. Guess our luck is bad Alice joked around with Alexander. The idea of the generator was hers. What? That's all because I didn't have my lucky charm with me today Alexander sat at the nearby bench while his uncle is buying cotton candy. You have a lucky charm? This is the first time Alice heard about this. Yeah, I got it a few days back. What is this lucky charm? Tell me Alice was curious about this, she didn't take Alexander for someone who believes in this sort of things. You. What? Alice wasn't ready for what she heard so she asked again. Alexander smiled and rubbed his forehead from the little embarrassment he is feeling I said you're my lucky charm. Dot Alice didn't answer for a while before she suddenly hangs up her phone. Alexander smiled and put away his phone while on the other side, Alice's face is as red as blood. She throws herself on the bed and kicked around and screamed like a little girl. Not fair, I am the playful one in this relationship, Alice screamed with her shy and embarrassed voice. With Alexander. Alfie got his cotton candy, too many of it. He came back to Alexander running with seven cotton candy in his hands in multiple colors. Which one do you prefer? He asked like a little excited boy in contrast to his mature children face. None, I don't like eating candy that has too much sugar in it. Alexander stood up and dragged the disappointed Alfie, although his disappointment didn't stop him from eating the whole seven cotton candies. It was about time. The both of them walked back to Shinomiya. They can arrive at the exact time, 10 p.m. And so, the two of them walked straight back to Shino's, and exactly at 9.57 p.m., three minutes earlier. They walked in and the restaurant was empty from everything except one table that was moved to the best view spot in the restaurant. The light was dim and the smell of roses filled the air. Shinomiya and his staff were standing at the side in one line. Well, 
I have to admit, the boy can manage things, Alfie said with awe. He had seen too many luxurious restaurants with an exaggerated one single reservation. This one was simple but not lacking the luxurious feeling at all. The food is being cooked slowly. We will serve ten minutes after your guest arrives here. Shinomiya stepped in and gave a small bow. Come and Kui Alexander casually patted Kujiro's shoulder aren't we friends? Kujiro straightened his back and adjusted his glasses. His serious or or never faded we are an employer and an employee. Shinomiya snapped his finger and the head chef brought a document to him which he handed to Alexander sign this and my shop will be yours. Alexander looked at Kui with a complicated expression sigh I don't like this feeling of you being all serious and all. Yes you work under me, yes your shop is mine he signed the contract and handed it back to Kujiro but the shop is still yours technically and I still respect you, a little. Alexander patted Kujiro's shoulder one last time don't get hooked in the hole of self-suppression. You need to grow and you won't do that if you lowered yourself to me. Alexander sat down on his table waiting for his partner to arrive. Alfie smiled at his nephew before turning to leave the shop I am outside with the boys if you need us, he waved and closed the door behind him. Kujiro looked at the document in his hand, in this kind of situation, he is supposed to feel like all his hard work was wasted since he lost his complete ownership over his shop but, he doesn't, it is the same feeling as ever, nothing was lost but he feels like something was gained, although he can't pinpoint what is it, Kujiro know it must be a great thing. His staff were relieved that Alexander didn't humiliate their boss. They had expected from him to be an arrogant rich boy who is full of himself and believes that he is better than anyone. They were glad, and so was Kujiro. Everything returned to its calmness that was before. Time started moving, fifteen minutes passed and Alexander's future fiancé is nowhere to be found. Getting bored, Alexander called for Kujiro. What do you want? I am busy with the sauce, he said with an annoyed glare. Relax, let the head chef do that. I am getting bored and I need someone to pass time with Alexander raised his hands in peace reacting to Kujiro's death glare I need someone to play cards with, do you know how to play you know? he asked. Kujiro didn't answer for a moment before he looked back to the kitchen, he saw his head chef peeking. He nodded at him which was returned. Yeah. I know he sat down facing Alexander with a completely serious look. Their eyes met for a moment and sparkles of thunder were shot from their eyes. Alexander brought a card deck from his suit's inside pocket and shuffled the card with the same complete serious eyes. The two played twenty rounds and it was Alexander's, defeat in each goddamn round. It can't be? He was in complete shock I have been practicing for a whole week. And the North Star Ultimate Uno Championship is soon. Kujiro looked at Alexander as if he was an idiot while also wondering about this Ultimate Uno Championship. Leave you from that, what about your guest? It's been like an hour or so. Kujiro looked at the clock. Don't remind me. Alexander was clearly annoyed at that. I should have just went to her straight. Dates are clearly not her thing. Alexander shuffled the cards again with a stiff manner from his suppressed anger preparing for one last round. Enough, said Kujiro as he stood up. What the hell man, just one last round. Your guest is here. Kujiro pointed at the outside in the front glass door where a young red-headed and a golden eyed girl is standing stuffing her face on the glass. Her hair is blood red as if it was dyed with her blood, it highlights her sleek and wavy hair. Her golden cat-like eyes are reflecting the light giving her eyes a glowing effect like that of a cat. Her smile is so wide and goofy that adds to her beauty another level. She eyed Alexander and their eyes connected for a moment and it was as if time itself stopped as the two of them kept on looking at each other for a brief moment that seemed like forever for the both of them. The girl was Alexander's future fiancé, Romano Rindo, or by the name she goes with now, Kobayashi Rindo. Chapter 43, Are You a Fun Person Outside of Shino's? Alfie is leaning on his car with Roberto. Both of them are looking at Rindo stuffing her face to the front glass door. Your daughter is pretty weird, isn't she? Alfie looked at Rindo with a funny expression. From the moment she stepped out of her dad's car, Alfie felt her car-free aura radiating. Her expression was that of a hunter that searches for its prey. In Rindo's case, the prey here is something fun. Yeah, she is. Just like her mother Roberto scratched his side cheek as he laughed nervously. He is praying that everything goes great and Rindo establish a good relationship with Alexander. By the way, you're pretty late aren't you? From your first impression, do you think that she is the type to listen to orders Roberto pointed at his daughter to which Alfie smiled and shook his head. Sorry for asking, he said. After a moment, Rindo opened the door and entered Hilu she said with a high-pitched voice. Kujiro returned her greeting and left to the kitchen. 
Rindo sat down in front of Alexander and scanned him with her cat-like eyes. Alexander packed his cards and spoke with Rindo did you just got out of school? He asked her, she was still in her Tatsuki's school uniform so he assumed she was in school all this time. Rindo smiled as she tried to remember where has she seen Alexander yeah, and you? No, I was here. About an hour ago. He looked at her sharply, blaming her for his wasted time. Scary. Rindo pretended to be scared when she saw Alexander glaring at her what is your name? Alexander Helmet, said Alexander, he finally put his cards in his inside pocket. And Rindo put her finger on her chin no, you're not the same person that I've heard about. What person? Someone in my school. I was wondering if you were the same person since you both have the same first name Rindo shrugged her shoulder in a nonchalant manner. That is me. Alexander realized that the person Rindo was talking about is him. I've told you my name, now it is your turn. Rindo raised her hand cheerfully yes. My name is Kobayashi Rindo or in our case, Romano Rindo. Nice to meet you she sounded like an eight-year-old girl introducing herself to her class for the first time. Well, Rindo, I think you have an idea about what you're here for Alexander wanted to get straight to the point and not waste any time. Yeah, my dad said you're my fiancé but, only if I agreed, Rindo added the last part with a serious expression making her playful aura disappear right away. Kujiro and his staff brought the food and placed it in front of Alexander and Rindo. The table became full immediately with all kind of dishes from Shino's special menu. Then, let's keep it short, do you agree or not? Alexander asked and returned her serious gaze with a more intense one. I can agree but, only on one condition. The atmosphere turned cold and all sounds faded, only Rindo and Alexander's voices could be heard. Are you a fun person? All the serious atmosphere Indo had around her faded and her playful self appeared again. Alexander faced himself for believing that she was going to ask for something unbelievable or something like that. What? asked Alexander. His face has a funny expression on it from Rindo's previous question. You see, I can't handle boredom. This is my last year in school and I have experienced everything that school can give. And I want from my last year to be the most exciting year of my life. Rindo told Alexander with cheerful and happy expression her reason for that question and if our marriage can add some fun to it then I have no problem with that. Alexander sighed and looked at the food in front of him. He took the fork and ate some of the duck liver in front of him. He was thinking about his answer. If he said he is a fun person then he would sound like some arrogant kid who is full of himself. But if he said he is not, Rindo may refuse the marriage. Rindo was waiting for Alexander's respond with eagerness. Her eyes are wandering around his face trying to get something from his expression. With the fork in his mouth, Alexander stopped what he was doing and smiled. Many people go around looking for the right person, fun person, reliable person, responsible person, but they never stop to look at themselves. Rindo was confused at his words but her smile never left her face. In your case, you're looking for a fun person to be with but what about you? Are you a fun person to with? His words hit Rindo in her chest making it feel like a rock fell in her stomach. She had never thought about that, she stopped to think for a moment as her face started twisting in a thinking expressions. You want to be with someone fun, then, me too, I want to be with someone who can make me laugh, make feel that life is easy. I can't be with someone who only demands and not gives. Alexander finished his dish and stood up shocking Rindo who did the same as him. Take a few days to think about what I've just said, and we will surely meet later. He turned around and stopped at the counter where Kujiro is waiting. Alexander brought out his black card and swiped it at the paying machine. See you later, Kui. He then left the restaurant and met with Alfie and Roberto. Is everything okay? asked Roberto. Yeah, she will be thinking about the proposal for a few days. Until that time, don't try to influence her. Alexandra ordered Roberto by the way, get your wife and pack your stuff, your flight will be leaving after two days, to Russia. My men will take you there. Roberto nodded and bowed a little, Alfie opened that car door for Alexander to enter and Vlad turned the car on. A second later, the parade of cars left Shino's area with only Roberto's car waiting for his daughter. A few moments later, Rindo came out from the restaurant with her expression still in deep thoughts, she is still thinking about Alexander's words. Baby girl, are you okay? Roberto hugged his daughter tightly. Yeah, I just need to think about something. Rindo entered the car with Roberto and they left to Rindo's Tokyo apartment that Roberto bought for her. Inside the restaurant, Kujiro and his staff were cleaning the table. Phew, I felt like dying. Lucy leaned on the wall as she let out a deep sigh. Her blue eyes were on the verge of tears. 
Yeah, the tension between these two was so high. Abel agreed with Lucy. Alexander and Rindo may not have realized it or not, but the tension between them was so high that it affected the staff except Kujiro who was used to this. The air between the two felt like it would be mayhem if one wrong word was spoken. Stop blabbering and go back to work, we need to open early tomorrow. Kujiro's scary and terrifying voice came from behind the two. Yes. They shouted and cleaned as fast as they could. Kujiro was thinking about what he had just heard from the conversation between the two earlier, he didn't mean to eavesdrop on them but they weren't trying to conceal their conversation. The second seat of the Elite Ten is getting married to Alexander and she does know he goes to Totsuki too. He let a smirk creep out of his mouth now this is interesting. Kujiro giggled creepily scaring his workers to death thinking he was planning to murder someone. Chapter 44, Polar Star We've reached Totsuki's school Vlad stopped the car in front of Totsuki gate and so did the cars behind him. Good. Alexander looked at his uncle who was sending messages to his sons back in Russia. I hate to ruin your sweet little time but make sure you keep an eye on the Etsuya boy Alexander was serious while Alfie was taking things lightly. Relax Alexei, what can a small Yakuza boy do to us? Alfie shrugged his shoulders in a carefree manner. He can't imagine a scenario where some will go against their family in the open with no power to back him up. This is exactly why grandfather made the family head instead of you Alexander throw some facts at his uncle without minding his uncle's feelings. That hurts. A little tear fell down Alfie's cheek. The memory of his father saying he wasn't cut out to be a leader still fresh in his mind. Then just keep an eye out for me, will you? Alexander stood at the car door, leaning inside the car asking his uncle to do his work properly. Okay, whatever Alfie looked the other way with his eyes closed. All Alexander could do is shake his head giving up. He closed the door and looked at Vlad. Drop my uncle off at the company and come back later, I still need someone beside me Vlad nodded and turned the car on. The cars passed Alexander one by one as they faded in the night sky. Alexander looked at the stars and sighed. How am I going to explain this to Alice? Alexander closed his eyes and took multiple deep breaths, all he can hope for is Alice will be willing to listen to him. He turned to the school gate and passed through after confirming he is a student by the security guards. Alexander was strolling down Totsuki's roads. The roads are illuminated by a wide range of lights that are commonly used in football fields. Arriving in front of Totsuki's many gardens, he sat down on the nearest bench. He looked at the sleeping flowers in front of him. His mind is clear and peaceful devoiced of any sort of stress. The lights shine down on the flowers giving them a beautiful glow. Alexander inhaled and exhaled fresh air. He smiled at himself. He stayed like that for a while, leaning his back on the bench, until his peace was disturbed with an unknown visitor. Aniki, Soma, Alexander's half-brother called as he stopped in front of Alexander who was about to sleep. Soma? Alexander looked at his brother with confusion what are you doing here in the middle of the night? Soma shrugged and sat beside Alexander I closed my dad's shop after that long battle with the carriage business at my hometown shopping district Soma explained to his anarchy what went down the last few days. I see, it must have been though. Alexander pushed his hair back and loosened his suit tight a breath more and let his body cool down. What about you anarchy? What are you doing here? Soma asked his brother the same thing, he was curious to why Alexander was sitting here alone. Just family business, anyway. Let us go, it's getting cold. Alexander stood up with Soma. He doesn't feel like explaining the mess he is in now and he doesn't want to even remember it. Yeah, let's go. The siblings walked with each other in the same direction with Soma telling his brother a few stories that happened to him in Totsuki that Alexander doesn't know about. When both of them reach a crossroad, they stopped and looked in up at the night sky for a moment. One row leads to the North Star Dorm while the other to the Polar Star Dorm. Say, Anarchy said Soma, he scratched his cheek and smiled, do you want to spend the night at my place, I want to introduce you to my friends properly. Alexander looked at Soma for a moment before he nodded sure, let's go. Soma was about to jump but he contained himself and walked with Alexander to the Polar Star dorm. Both reached the front door and Soma knocked on it lightly, they waited for a bit before Fumio, the mother of the Polar Star dorm opened the door. You're late, kid, she said with a little annoyed face. She crossed her arms and let Soma come in with Alexander. Who is the new guy? Asked Fumio, she eyed the sleepy Alexander walking behind Soma. She closed the door but her eyes never left Alexander's back, trying to remember this strange feeling of familiarity. This is my big brother, Alexander Soma introduced Alexander while he bowed a little. Soma-kun. 
You came back Megumi came down the stairs in her blue pajama. Her eyes are a little sleepy but she soon became awake as if it was noon Alexander Khan. She was in disbelief seeing Alexander behind Soma in his black suit while his hands are in his pocket from being lazy. His back is a little bent down. Hello, how are you doing? said Alexander but Megumi couldn't respond from her shock. What's all this noise? Yuki popped out from one of the ground floor's rooms when she saw Soma and Alexander she immediately shouted Yukihira and his brother? No sooner more people popped out like ants swarming on sugar. Marui, Ryoko, Ibuzaki, Shoji, Daigo, and lastly, Ishiki. All of them popped out from where they were hiding and came down. Oh. It's Yukihira's big brother Daigo said with a loud and aggressive voice. His friend Ibuzaki said the same thing and then they glared at each other looking for a fight. Hello there, I am Satoshi Ishiki, nice to meet you. Alexander Khan Ishiki extended his hand to Ishiki who was in his loose blue pajama with a winter hat. Ah. Alexander just nodded and greeted Ishiki back nice to meet you. Let's go Anaki, you must be hungry. Come on guys, let's show my brother what the polar star has. Soma raised his arm and so did the others. The atmosphere turned into a party-like feeling. The hell? said Alexander unconsciously. Ishiki guided Alexander inside the kitchen with all of the others and Fumio too. But what caught Alexander's eyes is only moment Ishiki was with his clothes on but just in a split second he became naked with only an apron that has a bare face on it. There it is, Ishiki's and pies on his second transformation. They shouted. The fuck? The smell of good cooking started felling the kitchen as Alexander was given all kind of dishes made by his brother and the others. Ryoko gave him rice wine that he enjoyed a lot. But when his brother, Soma gave him one particular dish, Alexander felt like vomiting what the actual sweet sea. Alexander looked at the dish with peanut butter and squid eyes. He looked at Soma who was grinning while looking at the peanut butter jar. This is no good either, huh? said Soma. The problem is that no one seems unfamiliar with that. All of the Polar Stars residents made fun of the dish and teased Soma a little while laughing at Alexander that it made him burst out shouting at them. This is too much for my health. Alexander panted heavily while the target of his anger are still partying and giving him food and drinks. Even Soma tried to give Alexander one more of his weird dishes. Give me another one and I'll make sure you won't be able to eat solid food for the next couple of months. He raised his fist showing Soma how serious he is. And even though he warned him, Soma managed to make Alexander eat one of his weird dishes which resulted at the end of the party for Soma to spend the night hanging like a pig being roasted up in the ceiling with a thick rope. Chapter 45, Select Early in the Morning, Alexander woke up with pain in his neck due to sleeping in a difficult position last night. He looked around and he found no one in the room. It was to be expected since it's 11am, he rubbed his eyes and made the bed. And then he went out searching for Soma and the others. He went downstairs because he heard a lot of noises. When Alexander reached the ground floor, he saw his brother playing ping pong with Seikaki who was sweating a little as her heavy melons jiggle up and down. It was a sight to behold but not for Alexander as he had his share of seeing many heavenly melons jiggling from Alice. Oh, Aniki, good morning. When Soma noticed his brother, he greeted him immediately not even paying attention to his game as Ryoko shot the ball scoring a point. Similar to Soma, Yuki, Megumi, and Ryoko greeted him. Good morning. Alexander Kanishiki came from behind Alexander giving him a creepy feeling. Yeah, good morning, what are you guys doing? asked Alexander. Yuki came near him with a grin on her face we're playing ping pong, do you want to join us? she asked. Alexander looked at the table and thought for a moment before going to the nearest seat and sat then ah, I am just going to watch, he said with a sleepy voice. Well, it's a shame that you won't join us but please enjoy our match Ishiki took a racket out of nowhere as he was wearing nothing sort of, but Alexander had already seen that yesterday so he wasn't that shocked about it anyway. Megumi and Ishiki faced each other as the air around them suddenly changed. The ball was thrown back and forth with an amazing speed. Whoa. That was all Alexander had to say. It was his first time watching a ping pong game, and Megumi's personality change amazed Alexander even further. Soma, Yuki, and Seikaki were analyzing the match as if they were coaches to the two. After nearly being defeated by Megumi, Ishiki pulled his dirty trump card. You've been selected as a member of the autumn election for this year, giving Megumi the bomb that she wasn't expecting. Ishiki took the chance and shot the ball giving him the leading point. E? Everyone shouted except Alexander who didn't understand the overreaction that everyone gave. Are you serious Ishiki Zenpai? 
Yuki asked with a horrified expression while Megumi lost all her colors and was about to faint. While everyone is panicking and throwing questions at Ishiki, Alexander picked himself up and left the Polar Star dorm. He met Fumio on his way, he greeted her and left through the gate. Fumio was looking at Alexander's back like yesterday. Just where? She touched her chin and looked even more at him. The way he put his hands in his pockets, the way he leans forward a little as he walks, the way he carries that bored expression. No matter what, Fumio can't help but have the feeling that she saw someone else behave the same way but she can never pinpoint who. And so, Alexander walked to the school. He was planning on going to the dorm first but he realized that no one will be there at this time. So he decided to search for them at the most likely place they will be in, school. It sure is empty today. While Alexander is walking in the school, he noticed that many areas are empty and all the students he could see were either walking towards the announcement table or coming back from it. When he arrived, he saw a large number of students gathering around a large blackboard that holds two large papers that have a list of names that are divided into two groups, Group A and Group B. But what caught his attention the most is Hyama, his dorm mate is standing behind the people with his usual bottle of spice and sniffing it. Alexander walked behind Hyama, and sneaked up on him you know you look creepy standing here with that bottle near your nose. He said giving Hyama the chills. Don't sneak up on me man, said Hyama. He closed his bottle of spice and looked at Alexander with an irritated expression Where have you been the yesterday? He asked. Work. I've heard from Alice that you guys decided on the match. Yay. It was decided to start once you return, and since you're here that means that we can start the challenge at any time today. Hyama grinned at Alexander. He can't wait to test Alexander and even himself. He had witnessed many battles between Alexander and Takumi but he never was able to get a feeling of the two's full power and this was his chance to get a glimpse of Alexander's abilities in person. Are you ready? asked Yama. Yeah, why not? We can do this now. Alexander scanned the crowd in front of them and he asked, where is Alice? Yama looked for a bit and then he pointed with his chin there, at the board, you were chosen as a member of the autumn election. Everyone in the dorm was chosen. He added the last part like it was nothing, and so did Alexander, he took the news casually like it was no big deal. Oi. Alice. Alexander shouted to get Alice attention who heard his voice from inside the crowd. She popped out like a cute little hamster and ran to him and hugged him dearly. Alexander patted her head. I missed you, babe. Alice refused to let go of Alexander so she hugged him even tighter. Yo followed Alice and greeted Alexander casually. Hello, he said with a monotone voice. Yo, Alexander, I am glad you didn't run away from our match. Takumu 2 and Isami came to Alexander and Hyama's spot and circled each other in a group circle. Me? Run away? Have you been taking drugs lately? Alexander said with a grin as he runs his fingers on Alice's hair who smiled like a little girl with her red beautiful lips. So, are we gonna do it or not? Said Alexander, Alice finally let go of him and joined Alexander yeah. It's on, I am gonna make you swallow your words back then she said. Takumi, Hyam, and Ryo looked serious, a cold air surrounded the group that even the far away people could feel the chilling aura. The gang started giving evil laughs to each other while Isami looked awkward there standing between a bunch of maniacs. Let's go to the dorm, said Alice, she pulled Alexander's hand as the others fold behind, a shock Hoji is going to take place in the North Star dorm and only a few people are going to be able to witness that. When the gang reached the Iron Gate and passed through, Alexander remembered something by the way who are the judges, he asked. Everyone thought for a moment before realizing they didn't decide who is gonna be the judge. Then Isami said, Natasha Asen said that she and I are gonna be judges. We need an odd number, Isami, said Takumi as he knocked on the front door. That's right, it will make deciding the winner difficult if there are only two judges, said Alexander. Alice agreed with him and so did the others. Natasha Asen said that there will be a guest visiting today. Isami shrugged his shoulders as everyone was wondering who this guest gonna be. Their answer soon will arrive as the guest himself was opening the door. It was a woman with long black raven hair with bloody red eyes and snow white skin. She was tall and lean. When her eyes landed on the people in front of her, she saw shock, awe, and happiness. The shock was from Hyama, Ryo, and Isami, while or from Takumi, but for the happiness part, that was for Alice and Alexander. Welcome back, she said. Chapter 46, A Legend Came to Inside the North Star Dorm. The atmosphere is lively and happy, and that is because the mother of this house, Natasha is running around the dorm with a big smile as she hummed a song. 
Lalala she cleaned the tables and hanged a banner on the wall behind her that says, Congratulations. She got the news of everyone being selected as a member of the autumn election tournament. This is just like the old time. Natasha cleaned the floor with a wide smile, she remembered the glory days of her dorm and how similar are they to the current time. Every one of her dorm residents is like or even more powerful than the former residents. Today is a big day, she said. While cleaning she heard the bell ring. She immediately put down her cleaning tools and ran to the door. Welcome back, she shouted. Oh, well, thank you, auntie. Natasha heard a melodic voice sound in front of her. She opened her eyes and saw the person she was missing this whole time. Her eyes became wet and her mouth moved like that of a fish. Alexandra. Natasha shouted and threw herself at Alexandra who caught her in a warm hug. It's been a long time, auntie. Alexandra tightened her arms around the old Natasha who was weeping in her embrace. Yeah, it is, it is Natasha couldn't deny Alexandra's words, after all, it's been seventeen years since the last she saw her. How about we continue this inside? Alexandra said as she looked to her side where her luggage is. Oh my god. Are you going to spend the night? Asked Natasha. Nah, I am just passing by Alexandra crushed Natasha's little dream and that was clear when Natasha leaked old and sad noises which earned a chuckle from Alexandra. Still the same old and over-emotional aunt you were for years Alexandra carried her luggage as Natasha opened the door fully for her come in, she said. Alexandra didn't even look around the beautiful house that she once called home and just headed straight up to her room which is currently her son's room. She throws her bag on the bed and went down to talk with her aunt. I believe that my son isn't a troublemaker, Alexandra said as she went down the stairs. Natasha who was in the kitchen making chocolate milk that Alexandra loved like crazy no, aside from the occasional disappearing for a couple of days, no. He is just like Natasha brought Alexandra a cup of chocolate milk to the couch where she was sitting and joined her. I am surprised at how much he resembles you, Natasha said with a smile as she watched Alexandra enjoy her chocolate milk. I hear that a lot, especially from my parents Alexandra put down her cup and smiled at Natasha, she swiped her black raven hair back to reveal her blood eyes fully to the world, another case where the mother and son resemble each other. You came to visit your son? Natasha asked. Yeah, me and Joe Chiro arrived in Tokyo earlier from the world leaders meeting and decided to pay a visit to our children, said Alexandra, but when Natasha heard the name of Joe Chiro her face turned grim with hatred. That hateful man is still alive? she asked. Seaman, auntie, don't be harsh on him, he received enough death threats from my father and brother already, Alexandra said with a helpless face. It's been sixteen years and all the people she is close with still hate Jo Chiro for leaving her and Alexandra even though she was the one who suggested that. Never. With passion, Natasha said, even though she couldn't bear to see her Alexandra being neglected like some random fruit on the road. I hoped Alfred had killed him back then. Alexandra couldn't help but shake her head knowing well enough what Natasha is thinking, after all, she loved her as a mother would. Oh, let me inform the kids that a guest will be here Natasha took her phone out and called Isami and told him that we will be having a guest today. I forgot to mention, you've arrived at the perfect time. Natasha sat down and smiled at Alexandra who knows that something interesting must have happened that Natasha is this happy what is it? she asked. Your son and his girlfriend Alice are gonna take the other three boys in a shock Oji, said Natasha. Alexandra was pretty amazed, after hearing the reason behind the shock Oji Alexander burst out laughing. He got dragged into this? Alexandra couldn't believe that her son would be dragged by his nose by his girlfriend. But I must admit, Alice, it took the two of them a long time to get together, I just hope she can understand. When Alexandra recalled her phone conversation with her brother Alfie, she couldn't help but feel worried. A man having more than one wife or girlfriend is not uncommon but it is still a hard thing for a woman to just accept sharing her man, especially someone who worked very hard for years to be the man she loves, she can only hope. Hope what? asked Natasha. Nothing, anyway, let's talk about us, do you still remember my first shock Oji? Alexandra asked with a smile. Natasha's face beamed with happiness and nostalgia of course. How would I forget such an epic battle, you faced against the first seat of the Elite Ten in your first month with all of your family's properties on the edge? I was so nervous that day Fufafu. It was really a nostalgic feeling for Natasha, she can still see Alexandra smiling and grinning from ear to ear without batting an eye, that was the time when the North Star's power reached its peak. With Alexandra, the North Star went strong without any equal for three years straight. 
The two women kept chatting about the past and the present. They didn't even feel the time flow at the sound of the doorbell rang. I'll get it. Alexandra stood up and went to open the door. Once she opened the door, the people who knocked froze in their place with different feelings and reactions. Alexandra saw her son Alexander, she smiled at him and said welcome back. Chapter 47 What about the Shokoji? Dude, I can't believe that I am standing in the presence of the godmother. Takumi looked at Alexandra in front of him with awe and respect, he whispered to his brother trying not to sound too obvious is she really Alexander's mother? He asked. Isami leaned at his brother and answered this is the 20th time you've asked this question, Nichin, and yes, she is his mother. Isami can't remember the last time his brother said something other than these two sentences. Kiyama who was near to Kimi shared the same feeling too. He read about Alexandra a lot in his research about Spice and her name pops up in every new book he has read and June is a hardcore fan of hers, if she got the news of Alexandra staying here, she will cross all seven oceans just to ask a few questions and get a signature. As for you, he wasn't that impressed, he had the chance to meet Alexandra in his training period with Alice's mother to be Alice's aide. Unlike the others, he didn't hold respect or amazement. He held deep down inside his heart a deep sense of fear. That feeling was born on a fateful day when he met Alexandra with Lady Leonora. That day he had witnessed a battle of two of the world's greatest giants. Alexandra and Leonora got into a shock her he, their battle made the tiny Yo feel like he is a nobody. That day he realized what the two women's titles meant truly. Truly, the titles of the May world's godmother and the queen of the kitchen weren't given to Alexandra and Leonora just for show. In front of Yo and the others, is one of these two women. She is speaking with Alexander and Alice with a cheerful smile on her face that can bring angels to shame. So, you two are a thing now, right? Asked Alexandra. Alice and Alexandra are looking around awkwardly trying not to smile and embarrass themselves while trying to keep a straight face. Well, yeah, said Alexander causing his mother to laugh at him for being so awkward about it. Too funny, this is too funny. Alexandra couldn't stop laughing from seeing Alexander's expression, and Alice being in the same situation as him doesn't help their case at all. Shut up mum. Alexander couldn't tolerate his mother's teasing anymore so he had to shut her up. Mother. Alice suddenly called causing the mother and son duo to freeze in shock. Mother? Thought Alexandra, a strange feeling started building inside her chest. I promise that I will take care of Alexander and make sure to make him happy Alice's eyes held so much passion and love when she spoke about Alexander. What? Asked Alexandra. She pushed her son's face away and came close to Alice. I said that I pro. Not that. Alexandra cut off Alice's words and said before that. What did you call me? Dot mother? Alice said in confusion, her blood eyes were confused as she tilted her head to side in a cute manner. Yes. Alexandra caught Alice in an intense hug causing Alice to suffocate. She only let her go after Alice begged for some air. Don't worry my daughter. Alexandra's eyes became wet from happiness. She couldn't imagine that her little visit to her son would give her this much happiness you don't need to promise me anything, if he made you sad, just call me. I'll make sure he eats some expired meat to heal his stomach. She winked at Alice as she gave Alexandra a side glance. He went to set back with Yo, Takumi, Kiyama, Isami, and Natasha. This group was watching the interaction as if they are watching TV. They found this very amusing. Except for Alexander. But he had enough of that so he decided to change the topic what about the Shokoji? He asked. Then everyone realized that we're forgetting the match between them. Ah, oh, yeah. Alice jumped from Alexandra's hug and stood in front of the group with serious eyes. Since everyone is here then we can start. The kitchen is ready and all we need left is one more judge. She looked at the guys for a suggestion to solve the problem. Alexander swiped his hair back for a moment before he pointed at his mother behind Alice. Alice turned around with a sweet smile mother would you be our third judge? She asked with a sweet voice causing Alexandra to nearly have a heart attack. Of course. Of course, my daughter her voice started shaking from how much happiness she was experiencing right now. Who knows that just one word like that will be able to move Alexandra to the point of crying. All right then. Alexandra stood up from the couch and looked at Ryu, Takumi, and Hyama. Are you ready to go down? He asked with an arrogant expression which pushed Takumi off. Keep dreaming, this is the day I mark my first win against you. Takumi stood up too and declared with pride I'll show you the way of Voldini he said. Kiyama and Ryo too joined in. I am not aiming to defeat you personally, 
but I just want to let that Snow White back there realize that I am not some inferior chef Kiyama's eyes were giving him off as he was determined to show the world June's way of cooking and this shock urge he may be just the first step. As for you, he looked at Alexander with an intense look but he didn't say anything in the end. Say something, you idiot. Alexander shouted. He was waiting for Yo's dramatic little speech so he can mock it at the end of the match but he did not say a single word which posed him off. Alexander cleared his throat and calmed down anyway, let's get this over with. Chapter 48, Making the Fish Inside the kitchen, Alice's team and Hyama, Takumi, and Yo's team faced each other with intense glares. All right, rules are simple, you have a maximum of two hours and a half to prepare a spicy merluzzo fish dish. You can use any tool that you deem necessary Alexandra stood between the two teams who didn't move their eyes from each other. A table was placed near the kitchen with three seats on it. Natasha and Isami are occupying two of them while the last one is for Alexandra. Does anyone object? She asked. No, shouted everyone. Then, may the best team win. Alexandra announced the beginning of the shock urge as both teams rushed to their station to prepare their dish. Takumi called bus team and whispered as we have agreed before, Yo will make the fish, I will make the spice and Takumi, you will assemble the whole dish for the presentation he looked at Yo and Takumi so they can confirm their plan are we clear? he asked. Yeah, sure, said Takumi, he nodded with Yo as he took off to prepare the fish putting his bandana on activating his berserker mode, while Hyama started choosing the best kind of spices based on his sense of smell, just like used to train with June. As for Takumi, he started the preparation for when his teammates passed their work to him. He has been preparing for this moment for days now. He was determined to beat Alexander today no matter what. He started mixing the sauce for the dish. As for Alice's team, both of Alexander and Alice are looking at each other with a deadpan face. What? Alexander asked. What what? Alice asked too. What is the plan? He said, he shrugged his shoulders and continued I hope that you have a plan, cause I don't. Alice smiled at him and giggled he he he. I don't have any plan too she stuck out her tongue in a cute manner trying to plea for mercy but her cuteness didn't affect Alexandra at all. He grabbed her head and rubbed his fist very hard on it making Alice feel the seven hells of pain. Ow ow ow, I am sorry, sorry. She wanted to cry hard from the pain she was getting. Her boyfriend can be cruel at times like this. Well. She can't blame him for his reaction. Alexandra and the rest of the judges are looking at the two with a funny expression. What are they doing? Natasha sweat dripped at the two's antics. Isami couldn't help but feel the same while Alexandra just thought of it as cute. As a punishment, you'll do all the work, said Alexander. What? Alice's eyes opened wide at the sudden decision listen here honey, we are a team, that means we will do this to she couldn't finish her statement when she locked eyes with Alexander's unforgiving eyes yes sir, I'll do everything myself. She saluted like a soldier and started preparing the tools to work. Alexander sighed and relaxed his shoulders you make the sauce while I prepare the fish for you. Yes, sir. Alice started making the sauce as Alexander is instructing her. Mix olive oil, one small onion, two garlic cloves, one teaspoon oregano, and one tin tomato with salt, pepper, and parsley. Alice didn't want any time as she moved swiftly following whatever Alexander says, her ears are focusing so she wouldn't miss a thing. While Alice is working very hard, Alexander is not lazing around. He grabbed the merluzzo fish by the mouth and placed her in front of him, swiftly slicing the middle with a knife like a hot razor cutting through butter. He took out the fish spine and cut off the head, all that is left is the fine fish meat, he cut the meat into six different pieces so they can be shaped into meatballs. Alice was done with her sauce and Alexander handed her the pieces. My role here is done, I will be sure to guide you, so don't worry Alexander went behind Alice and put his chin on her shoulder as he grabbed her waist causing Alice to blush but she didn't resist his advances. All right, just like that, dice the cod, pour some olive oil into a frying pan, add the cod season lightly with salt and pepper. Alexander's breathy voice sounded next to Alice's ears which made her tremble slightly with her face red like the sauce. Alexander had to grab her hand and work through with her. Whoa, that my son for you. Alexandra was feeling amazed at how swiftly her son owned his girlfriend in a matter of a minute. She can see Alice submitting to Alexander's move. Her eyes flashed with pride. All the time she spent teaching him these moves didn't go to waste. On the other side, the boys are boiling with anger take this seriously, will you? The three witnessed as their shock urge turned into a date for the two. Into the oven now. 
Alexander let go of Alice as she opened her special oven and pushed some buttons. Alexander sat down on his chair. Alice finished working on the oven and soon joined Alexander to sit on his lap. That was unfair of you Alice kissed Alexander on his cheek while blushing. Is it? I thought it was a good idea Alexander whispered into her ear again making Alice feel her heart racing again. It was. She said meekly as Alexander returned her previous kiss. The atmosphere in the kitchen turned pink causing the enemy team to work with an irritated expression. After an hour, both teams' dishes started giving their heavy aroma. They clashed together and it seems Alice team's aroma is losing against Hyamas. HMPH. That is expected Hyama smiled with pride as he was pretty confident about their dish. But strangely, Alexander wasn't phased by any of this. Soon, the time to serve their dish arrived. Both teams brought out their dish, Hyama, Takumi, and Ryu. Each one of them presented a dish to one of the judges. Ooh, a stuffed Maruluzo fish? Alexandra looked at the dish in front of her and said with a smile. Yes, it is vegetables inside, it mixed with a hot and sweet sauce. Enjoy yourself, Hyama explained gently to Alexandra, Natasha, and Isami who took their first bite. Isami started sweating a little as Bid Face became a little red so hot, but I can't stop. Isami started digging in his dish like there is no tomorrow. He was assaulted by the heavy taste of the fish meat and the strong aroma that burst out when he opened the stuffed fish. Natasha was the same, she felt like she is swimming with the fishes under a deep ocean of lava. As for Alexandra, she didn't have a strong reaction like the other which surprised the boys, then they remembered that she was there, godmother, everything they made, she made it first. So tasty. Alexandra said with a smile as she finished her dish first. It was a pleasure to serve you, said Hyama. Crazy, said Takumi. Hell yeah, Roy shouted with his eyes flaming with a desire to win and crush his opponent. It is our turn now. Alice and Alexander brought their dish and presented it. Unlike the boys earlier, there was no heavy aroma that brought attention to the dish, it was a simple dish of fish meatballs with some vegetables like potatoes, onion, and tomatoes. Here is our dish, take your time, said Alexander with a confidant smile. He gave his mother a look that kind of pissed her off. The last dish is being served, which team will win? As Hyama noticed, Alice team's dish aroma is very weak compared to theirs. Will Alexander's dish lose? Chapter 49, Home, Sweet Home Alexandra looked at the dish in front of her and then looked at her son who calmly stood there with his arm around his girlfriend's shoulder. A fishbowl, really? Alexander chuckled at her words and said it's the first thing that came to my mind he shrugged his shoulders with a smile, fishbowls aren't the fanciest dish but they are still great if you know how to cook them. As he said. Alice supported her boyfriend with a serious expression. TSK, and here I was expecting something revolutionary from you. Alexandra mumbled under her breath as she took the first bite of the dish followed by Natasha and Isami. Takumi, Hyama, and Ryo waited for the results on edge. If Ryo didn't have that traumatizing experience from the past from Lady Leonora and the women in front of him he would have cursed her to hurry up and eat the damn thing. But even monsters can sense death when it's near, and no one plays with death. Alexandra took a bite, she closed her eyes giving no reaction at all. The same goes for Isami and Natasha, they just closed their eyes. Kyam grinned mentally as he thought this is our victory. But if only he knows what the three judges are feeling. For Alexandra, inside her mind, a memory was triggered. She walked inside a very familiar house, she saw stairs going down and she followed them. At the bottom and the ground floor, she heard a lot of noises that seemed familiar to her. Alexandra saw in front of her a scene that she missed a lot. Oi Leonora quit wasting food for your experiments a young and a very healthy voice that Alexandra could recognize between millions. It was the voice of the young Natasha. The mother of the polar star dorm. The girl who was getting yelled at was none other than Solomon's Leonora, or as she is currently known, Nakeri Leonora. Take it easy, auntie, I am just making a new dish the snow-haired and pale-skinned girl didn't mind the yelling she was getting at. Shut up you airhead, Alexandra. Come here and see what this idiot is doing. Oi, what got Alexandra between us now? Leonora showed a frightful expression there was no need to call her. As Leonora was begging for her life, a door was opened to reveal a younger version of Alexandra. Her skin was as pale as Leonora's and blooded eyes are shining giving the young Alexandra a frightening look. Oi, did you use the vegetables I took care of? She walked to the scared Leonora. I, you see, yesterday. A shock her ye. Before Leonora could defend herself, she received a strike to the head from Alexandra. You dumb snow, I told you to not use my vegetables. 
Alexandra shouted as she hit Leonora on the head. The grown Alexandra Alexandra who was watching her golden time in front of her own eyes couldn't help but smile and tear up a little bit. She watched as she and her old friend are fighting like the young teens they are. That idiot son of mine. Alexandra is well aware that this is the work of her son's ability but she couldn't really blame him for showing her such a good part of her life. While Alexandra is watching this, Natasha is seeing the same scene, for her, Alexandra and Leonora, this was the best time of their lives, all of them spent these three years here in this house, fighting, challenging and crushing every opponent that came their way making the North Star the strongest house out in this school. The strength they accumulated made the house keep going strong for long years with no students at all. On the other hand, Isami is watching how he and his brother learned to cook from their mother at a young age. He couldn't keep his emotions in control when he saw his mother again after long. Alexander grinned and asked now, who is the winner? Everyone in the room tensed. Kiyama and the others weren't as sure as before when they saw the judges tearing up. Alexandra raised her hand Alice team for me. Alice team, said Natasha. Alice team, followed Isami. Takumi and Hyama couldn't believe their eyes and ears, Takumi clenched his fist again. He thought bitterly. While Hyama looked up and closed his, Yo for the first time cursed out loud. Fuck. Shut up. Alexandra shouted at Yo shutting him down immediately, Alice removed his bandana so no trouble will come up from him later on. And now this proves that we are the strongest in this dormitory she did a victory sign. Was that what this shock heard he about? Alexander rubbed his chin as he tried to recall the reason for this shock heard he, but no matter what he wasn't able to remember. Well, don't be sad kids, you have three years to battle again and again. Just make sure that you don't lose your rationality thinking about your defeat. Alexandra gave a little speech to the losing team, she had witnessed many people who lost their path after their defeat. You don't need to tell us, Alexander, Alice, Ihyama will defeat you the next time we meet. The autumn election is just a week ahead so until then, be prepared Hyama then left the dorm, he needs to calm down, and the best place to do so is June's place. Takumi sighed and resolved to improve himself again as he apparently is still far too weak while Yo was getting smug looks from Alice from time to time, this wasn't his first loss so he isn't that frustrated but goddamn it still hurts. They got lively again after a day or so after everyone got over their loss but that didn't mean that they accepted their defeat just like that. The autumn election is near. Will that event bring our talents out of the students? Will it show our dishes from the young ones? Or will that event too turn into something far more than just a tournament? Chapter 50, Engagement The next day, the North Star was filled with a heavy smell of food being cooked, the aroma travelled across all the rooms waking everyone up with a smack. Alexander in his room with Alice woke up by the delicious smell. Whose turn to cook today? He asked with a sleepy voice. MMM, I think it was my turn Alice rose up from his chest and rubbed her eyes. Both of them looked at each other for a moment and decided to leave the bed. Heading downstairs to the kitchen, they found Yama, Takumi, Ryo, Isami, and Natasha surrounding Alexandra. When Alexandra saw the two came down finally, she smiled at them and said, food will be ready in ten minutes. Alice beamed with a smile as she ran to the kitchen and joined the others mother is cooking? She asked with an overly excited tone sending an arrow to Alexandra's heart when she heard her call her mother again. Yes, sweetie. Alexandra couldn't help but smile at the little snowball, she really liked Alice like her real daughter. While everyone is marveling at the scene of the godmother cooking in front of them, Alexander decided to lay on the couch until the food is ready so he can squeeze that last drop of sleepiness out. After ten minutes, Alexandra finished cooking as she presented her dishes which could only be described as one of a kind. Everyone got a taste, saying they have tasted the fruits of heaven is not an understatement. Everyone had a blissful expression except Alexander, the boy basically grew up eating this food as snacks. They talked between themselves a bit with Takumi and Hyama asking a few questions about the front lines of the cooking world which Alexandra was more than happy to answer. While they are talking, the gate bell rang I'll get it. Alexander stood up to answer the call so he can leave everyone to enjoy the breakfast that they may never get to taste again. He opened the front door and walked to the outside gate with the morning mist making him feel cold but a pleasant kind of cold. There was no one at the gate, he looked at the road and he saw a motorcycle leaving. He looked at the mailbox and opened it, he found an envelope and opened it. What he read inside was interesting. It was a letter from the Elite Ten regarding the autumn election. It says that the autumn election's preliminaries will be held in the next week instead of the next month due to a new schedule of Tatsuki dealing with a new business partner. Great, that saves a lot of time. 
Alexander took another sheet that has nothing on it other than theme, curry dish, curry, theme. Alexander wondered about what is written in the paper, he tried to think for a moment before a light bulb shined on his head oh. It's what we are supposed to cook in the preliminaries. Alexander shook his head not believing himself for taking a few seconds to realize what that meant. He then went inside the house and informed his friends, they were surprised at first but not for long as they just accepted the deal and mentally prepared themselves for the autumn election this week. After finishing the breakfast that was made by Alexandra, Kiyama stood up I am leaving to June's place, I will be doing some research on curry if you want to join, he said. Count me in, said Takumi, he had no experience whatsoever regarding the curry field, the only thing he knows about curry is that it has a lot of spice, like, a lot of them. Let's go Isami, Takumi and Daisami followed Kiyama as they left the dorm. Yo, Alice, Alexander. Natasha, and Alexandra were the only people left on the breakfast table. Alexandra looked at Yo across of her and said, why don't you follow them? Yo looked at her and said with a monotone voice I don't need to. I wasn't asking. Alexandra smiled as she elaborated her words. She was ordering him. Yo didn't hesitate to leave immediately, leaving only Natasha who too took the hint and stood up I still have not cleaned my room she went upstairs. What is wrong? Alice sensed something was wrong so she had to ask. We have a very important matter at hand to talk about, Alexandra said seriously as she picked a little piece of carrot that was left off her plate and hit Alexander to wake him up before he falls asleep again. What is wrong, mother? This is weird said Alice, she had this feeling that something is very bad was about to happen. My dear, you seem to not realize this but, Alexander is getting into an arranged marriage. Alexandra dropped the bomb causing Alice's heart to feel like she was shot with a pistol. What? she asked with her mouth moving like a fish. It is as she said, but it's not official yet, the other party is still thinking about the matter, but if she agreed, then I will be engaged to someone else. Alexander followed his mother's path. They didn't plan this but Alexander was quick to understand his mother's motive. She is trying to save him from a lot of trouble. Who is she? Is it Arena? Alice wanted to explode from anger. If what she said was true and it turned out to be Arena, she swore to make Arena suffer for life cousins or whatever, she wasn't willing to lose Alexander because of these dirty tricks. Relax, it is not her, in fact, I have not spoken with Irina for over a month now, said Alexander. Then who is this girl? Alice was dying to know who is this ugly duck who got in her way, it was supposed to be her, she was supposed to be his first girl and love. She can't lose yet. Well. Alexander scratched his cheek as he struggled to speak the second seat he said. Alice froze in her place trying to understand what just happened, then it fell on her Kobayashi Rindo Senpai? She shouted this can't be, she thought. Now now, relax my honey, what I wanted to talk about is not this but another thing. Alexandra tapped on the table as she looked at Alice with a loving eye. The what? Alice asked with a pained voice which made the mother and son feel like their heart are being squeezed. I want to take the chance that the other girl is still thinking about the deal to say, do you want to get engaged to Alexander? Like, right now Alexandra said shocking the girlfriend and boyfriend duo. Silence dropped in the room before Alice stood up sharply yes. She shouted as loud as she can, yes. If she got engaged first, then her efforts won't go to waste but only bring her one step ahead. Her relationship can go even beyond. They won't be a boyfriend and girlfriend anymore but an engaged couple soon to be married, yes. Her dream is just around the corner. Great, said Alexandra I've already talked with Leonora and they agreed. So now, both of you can consider yourself to be an engaged couple. She smiled at both of them. Alexandra looked at Alice N.S. smiled at her fondly, he ruffled her hair which earned a chuckle from her a disaster avoided Alexander can only thank God and his mother, he was sure that if his mother didn't use the engagement card, his relationship with Alice can be damaged as he had been hiding this matter from her for days. Let's take a walk, honey, Alexander said to Alice as he extended his hand to her. With a slight blush, Alice took his hand and they left the dorm to walk together. Alexandra smiled and nodded at the two. Natasha came down the stairs with a face full of smiles. Should we prepare for a celebration? She asked. No need, but more importantly, I am leaving to my company. My brother is crying blood from all the work Alexander throw at him, said Alexander as she cleaned the table real quick. Natasha displayed a sad face which earned a chuckle from Alexandra I'll come back later, I still have to attend this she showed her a letter. This is? Natasha was shocked when she read the letter. Yeah, so don't be sad auntie, me and Leonora will meet again. And so, 
Alexandra packed her stuff and left the dorm. The boys are at June's place researching a bit about curry while Alexander and Alice are drunk in their own world. And so, one week went by like a flash. And the grand stage if the autumn elections came, all of the students headed to the Grand Shock Hoki Arena to witness the battles that are going to take place today. The North Star residents stood in front of the arena and exchanged a look between each other, they grinned at each other and nodded understanding each other completely. Two of us must meet in the finals that was their goal, 